Hey everyone, welcome to uh, the Bent Methods Podcast. I'm Keelan, we got Jared, we also got Chris, and uh, yeah, bringing another episode to the streaming platforms. Uh, (laughs) We got our next guest, I think this is would be number 14 episode. Yeah, episode 14, I believe this is. Episode 14, and we got none other than Greg Poisson, or how do you pronounce it, Poisson? (laughs) Poison? Way off, dude. It's uh, it's poisson. 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 Yeah. Are you poisson. French? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, not really. I mean, my my heritage is French, and and uh, my grandparents should speak French and whatnot. But uh, it, you know, as the years go on, you kind of lose it. So I'm more uh more Ontario than than Quebec for sure. So now it's Greg Poison. <laughs> dude, you have no idea how many people say it's poison or it's uh. Or they'll say poisson, like they'll add a and t on the end. Uh, it's, yeah. Like that's what it sounds like. It's like croissant. It's brutal. <laughs> croissant. That's a badass name, though. Greg Poison. Yeah, yeah it's like I your heavy metal name. Yeah. What's your fo- yeah. sorry? What, your funny story? Uh yeah. So my um my buddy Keith, um you know the company Fat Fifties or, or Fat MX, like yeah. he does all these like uh, cool parts for fifties and stuff. So he did up my jersey lettering one year, and then. uh um, he used the band po- the the rock band Poison's font and then made it Poisson. Uh, so, oh yeah, that's it cool. was kind of cool. And that then means. actually uh, another quick side note. So I've got it right behind me. Um, I'm pretty good buddies with Don Maeda from uh, Swap Motor Live, formerly of uh, Transworld. Yeah. So uh, he sent me a helmet this year um, just as a thank you. I hooked him up with some stuff, and so he got it all custom lettered. And uh, here, I'll pull. and he did the the same thing. Oh, oh, that's oh, badass. That's sweet. Yeah, so nice. I didn't even tell him about it. He just did it on his own. So it's it's happened a couple times. Cool. Is that just yeah. a straight black show? Oh, yeah. It's got the swap on there, too. Nice. That's yeah, badass. Custom, custom painted. She's sweet. legit. Oh, I got Jeff on there, too. Sweet. sweet. Oh, yeah. That's just, a little... I haven't put that on yet, but uh, that's one of the... I was just keeping it there for... for when I decide where to put it. But, yeah, that was just a flat, or, uh, shiny black showy that they, they did. Yeah, that's sweet. super clean. How do you get to know Don? um through cycling actually so i used to work uh for shimano canada so uh i just i get forget what happened like it was on instagram or something and he was posting about buying a new road bike and i reached out to him about uh getting some giving him some parts this is going back a couple years now and i hooked him up with a bunch of parts for his new road bike build from specialized and we've been kind of buddies ever since so hooked me up with a helmet and some stuff like that and and uh you know all the inside scoop so i always know this stuff before other people which is kind of cool yeah yeah it's a good industry insider friend to have right there for sure oh yeah it goes those guys in the states are on a a totally different program than what we have that's for sure yeah definitely so uh I did. all right all right you want to add some something to that well i was gonna say it's, it's funny that uh yeah, they're di- they're so different there, but we have things a little bit, you know. Uh, sometimes it's good up here too, right? So I rode the um, the Yamaha 250F, the, the 2021, before anybody in the U.S. did. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Uh, so Billy, yeah, Billy and I did the test day for direct motocross at, at Moto Park, and uh, um, so did, uh, the video was already out. The you know we'll call it a review was already out. It was just basically me talking about how much I liked it, and. Uh, and then yeah, Don and all those guys, they hadn't even touched it yet. So it was kind of cool to have it. We were out way before them. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, that bike looks uh looks like a mean machine. Those things look sweet, especially with the monster kit on them too. Yeah. I think it won the shootout, most of the shootouts, the two fifty F. Oh really? Is yeah, it... it won the vital one. Yeah. Is it like a fairly updated model? Like is a lot of things different on it now or I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, they though. they told us they I if she was, it was like fifteen different uh, updates to it like nothing huge but all these little no things frame, that apparently made it better no frame changes or anything like that just like chassis stuff maybe a little bit of suspension yeah suspension chassis um like little things like foot pegs and stuff and like i'd never ridden one before so um to me it was all brand new but that thing was uh i can see why the star guys in the states do so well on them because that like bone stock was so fast it was unbelievable and it revved like it revved to the moon yeah, and they handle good too. Yeah, I like yeah, my Yamaha a lot. Yamaha was a yeah, sick. it was a, it, it was a cool bike. It was like a, I, I grew up on Honda, and then I rode a, a Husky this year, and and they've all felt really good. And then I got on the Yamaha, I was like, oh, I don't know what this is gonna feel like. And then it was uh, from you know first, I think after like a couple laps, it was like it was awesome. 
It was so much fun. I, I put two hours on the bike that day, which is a lot for me. Yeah, that's a lot for anyone, really. I was beginning. To, I I think I saw pretty... saw your post there because I was starting to wonder if you're jumping ship on Husky. <laughs> no, no, I'm just trying to create some inner industry tension, right? It's like for them to up their offer. <laughs> 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 Let them know I'm tr- I'm trying out for other teams and brands. Hey guys, uh, you know, come to the table with something big. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. So uh, I guess. Uh, It'd be nice to just uh, backtrack a little bit and maybe if you could give uh, yeah. some people that might not know you that well a little bit more of a background story on uh, how you kind of got into the sport and, and uh, yeah, and just a bit about your upbringing and basically up until now. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I've spent my life in the sport like so many of us. Um, I started riding when I was five. I had a Honda QR50 as my first bike. Um, my dad worked for Honda Canada for just under 30 years. So he was in the, the motorcycle division there. Um, you know, I was really fortunate to kind of be thrown in to the sport. Like at a, you know, I grew up around guys like JSR and, and, uh, you know, uh, Chuck Mesley and, and all these guys, um, you know, my dad had a hand in, in some of their careers. You know, he basically was, uh, district sales manager here in Ontario. And then he handled a lot of racing too, because we were going to the races. So he was just kind of got involved in that. Um, so yeah, I was going to all the races from a young kid, uh, you know, pretty young age. Uh, I remember going to Walt when I was like, man, I was probably like five, five or six years old, just, uh, not even racing, just going there and, and hanging out in, in the, the box fans with like guys like Chris Pomeroy and, and JSR and all that stuff. So I was just this little, you know, little, uh, track kid running around and just acting pretty cool. Cause I knew everybody. So, um, so that was, that was the beginning. And then, uh, I uh, started racing, you know, uh, went up, uh, rode Hondas my whole life pretty much. I uh, raced a 60 class on a XR70. So that was a four-stroke guy from a pretty young age. And then I uh, didn't race 80. So um, again, up getting hurt, tore my ACL. And then uh, kind of crazy growth spurt. I went from riding basically an XR70, riding an 80 handful of times to riding 125. Um, so race locally, of course, race Walton a bunch of times. Um, you know, made the, the jump eventually to intermediate and, uh, and did all that, that, uh, you know, racing a lot of Eastern Ontario stuff and, um, Sandalee and, and local series around here. Um, you know, and then we'll kind of call, use the word like retire, but I, you know, we'll call whatever you want to call it, but, uh, retired at 25 and went to school and, um, graduated locally here from a college in, in Peterborough and, and got involved in the cycling industry. So I worked for Shimano Canada right out of, uh, right out of school. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you go to school <laughs> for? A, uh, sporting goods business actually. So, um, I wanted to be involved in business somehow. I knew that's pretty general course to take. And then, uh, I just, you know, I found sporting goods was, a, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really want to be in the sporting goods industry, but it just made it a lot more interesting to go to school because I could connect with a lot of the, the different brands and stuff we worked on and, and stuff like that so it was cool um kind of brought like a action sports vibe to a, a room full of hockey kids so it was, it was pretty much like i'd say 90 percent hockey or you know baseball kids so uh so i was like the the old old motocross guy in the class because i was older than everybody too um anyways yeah i got out started working in the cycling industry i was there for oh geez like three or four years maybe yeah maybe like three or four years and uh, started bringing uh, Shimano in, in the cycling world and tried to take that in the, in the motorcycle, motocross world and bring them together a bit. So the last couple of years, we were bringing the, one of our Sprinter vans we had. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that. Yeah, no, some of the East Coast stuff. But we had our big blue – yeah, we had the big blue van there and um, just tried to help out. You know, we weren't really sponsoring anybody or, or uh, you know, doing much. It was more just like a vent activation. And then, you know, we'd help some guys out with parts and, and whatnot and services while we were there. But uh, – did that and and uh, eventually moved away from that and now I work in the uh, fuel and oil industry. So completely different world, but yeah. uh, I, I like it a lot. So fuel and oil, and yeah, that's kind of Ontario. Yeah, so I, I work uh, for a company called Parkland Fuels. They're actually based out of Calgary. Yeah, and uh, so we uh, we own like Ultramar, Pioneers. I'm trying to think what else, what is out that west? Yeah, so, Chevron, right? Yeah, Chevron. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a sales manager there. 
uh, in Ontario on the commercial side. So it's just a lot of numbers and a lot of stuff, but it's, it's kind of cool. It's so totally different than what I'm used to. And, and, uh, I think I'll make a career out of it. So, you know, now it's kind of allowed me to get back into, uh, into motocross too, the last couple of years. So I've, I've always wanted to come back, but, um, you know, we can get into that later, but, um, the last year was kind of pretty cool to, to bring a lot of things together. And, and, uh, my job was allowing me to do that as well. And, and, uh, you know, now we're here. Yeah. So, uh, I guess going back a little bit, how, so when you yeah, got out of school and you went to Shimano, how'd you get linked up with, uh, that job? Uh, ironically it was, I just fell into it. So their headquarters for Canada are here in Peterborough and, uh, which nobody really, you know, nobody knows that for the most part. Everyone thinks Toronto or, or somewhere else. Um, their whole headquarters are, are here. Um, so they had a posting for like an entry level job, um, doing like dealer development and stuff like that. And, I thought, hey, like it sounds interesting, and you know, I've always kind of been into bicycles, as you know, all of us are. From from moto guys are always into something to do with two yeah. wheels. So, uh, um, took the job and and kind of moved it around in there a little bit. Did some different things. Started doing a lot of events too, because uh, you know I really enjoyed doing that part and you know trade shows and and then uh, they gave us a bit of leeway, and that's when we started bringing it back to to moto. So, yeah, well, that's definitely like like you said obviously a huge market like every moto guy at least has one or two maybe even three three pedal bikes that they're using a mountain bike like road bike and maybe even an e-bike now yeah yeah i know you get some guys that are just as into cycling as are into moto like tyler medallia for example he loves cycling he's a he's a and he's a beast on a bicycle too so i we i uh i helped him out with some parts over the years and, and different things and um that's a strong connection. So in the U.S., they actually do sponsor uh, a lot of guys like Chad Reed, Justin Brayton, um, you know, the, the Shimano does anyways. And then there's also, I mean, I think everybody has a, a bicycle sponsor of some sort. So, Would you say like the Shimano presence in Canada would be bigger than in the U.S., uh, than the United States as far as like a pro presence with like mountain bikers and... I, I don't really know too much about the cycling side of things, but like mountain biking yep. in Canada is huge. Um, yes and no. Like, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where we have a lot of good, like our, I'd say our talent level is through the roof. Like you go to BC, I mean, there's, there's tons of different guys that that's all they do is ride mountain bikes or, or something. Definitely the road scene isn't as good up here as it is, but mountain biking in Canada is, is, is massive. So like I said, you go to BC and there's, there's people that live there and, that's all they do is ride and produce content and stuff like that. And, and, uh, you know, you've got younger kids coming up like, uh, Jackson Goldstone, for example, he's, he's the, the next big thing in Canada for cycling. And he's, I think he's like 15 years old. He's, he's pretty young. Um, <clears throat> so with us, it's, it's definitely more, uh, more mountain bike oriented, whereas the States it's, it's, uh, I'd say it's a bit more of a split. Like it's a bit more even where up here, I definitely say it's more skewed to, to mountain bike side. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and you said you worked for them for about three or four years. Uh, what yeah, kind of years? Or what kind of made you move on from that? Um, <laughs> you seem pretty <laughs> passionate honest, about it. it. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've, I I really like dove into. It's really interesting and still something that I know a lot about. And it's a uh, it's a really unique uh, it's a really unique industry because it's you know for for us as as moto guys growing up where. Um, you know, we're used to having like bent, like for example, like bent pieces on your bike or your, your dirt bike, you know, like a bent lever or, you know, things aren't always a hundred percent sometimes, right? Like they're never pristine. I mean, they, like our bikes usually are really good, but they're never like, they're never as good as when the first day you pick them up, right? They're always something yeah. going on with them. a scuff here or there. Whereas the bicycle world, uh, everything is, for example, like a, a rear derailleur, it has to be perfect. Uh, or else there's going to be, you're going to feel it or you're going to hear it, or there's going to be something that's going to be a co like a consequence to that. Um, so something I learned and, and it's, it's, it's really funny. Like they're, they're cyclists or weight weenies. Like they're the worst. They would carry about, they care about grams and, and you know, whereas we care about pounds in motocross, right? Like it's like, Oh, I can save, you know, four or five pounds by using an air fork instead of a, a spring fork. Um, whereas cyclists, it's like, Oh yeah, we shave like, like 60 grams, a hundred grams. And you know, it's there, it's a very different industry and, and sport in general. It's kind of, kind of funny, but 
um, super interesting. I love, I love still a part of it, you know, still ride bikes a lot and, and, uh, you know, try to get out. I, I ride with a local cycling group here a lot and, um, you know, just try to get out as much as possible. Yeah. So, uh, and where, where did you move on from that again? Sorry, from Shimano. Uh, so I moved on from Shimano to where I am now at Parkland. Oh, okay. And so yeah. how long have you been doing that for? Uh, just over, uh, just over a year now. Oh, okay. What, well, and yeah. so when you say you're in the commercial side of things, like what, uh, like the commercial sales side of things, what, like what exactly does that entail? Like, I'm actually kind of curious about that. Um, so with commercial side, it's more about, um, so there's two sides. There's retail, which is like your gas stations and, and whatnot. You see like an Ultramar gas station. Um, that's a totally different side. And then for me, it's more about, uh, working with companies or, um, you know, corporations and we deal with like hundreds of thousands to like a million liters of fuel. So it's diesel, gas, all those kind of different things. Um, we're working with, for example, I just worked with a, a landscaping company this week that does snow removal at a bunch of malls in the Toronto area. Mm-hmm. So they, we supply them with tanks, uh, in their yards and, and various places so they can fuel up their, their trucks and tractors, uh, at their sites. So it's like a, I think they were like 150,000 liters we predicted for the winter. So it's, it's pretty big volume stuff. Oh, okay. Are you, do you do like exclusive contracts too with like uh, companies as well? So they're only exclusively using your fuel or? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we have different things like a trucking company, for example, will have uh, what we call like a, a card lock or, um, you know, they use yep. our, like our cards. So they'll only go to our gas stations, but they get a certain discount off their fuel. Yeah. Um, so we work with those guys and, um, kind of set them up. That's, that's another side of the business too. I don't really do that as much, but I'm more like the, the hands on the, or feet on the ground, boots on the ground kind of guy, uh, you know, setting up with, with tanks and whatnot and, yeah. and different things. <clears throat> oh yeah. No, I was, uh, yeah, just kind of curious cause I've been, um, I've been working with my parents, like they got a trucking company too. I've been working for yep. them or with them for the past few years but i only just started doing more of the office stuff and and learning about more of that and and uh deals with uh specific gas companies and and whatnot so yeah so for example for for you guys um you know we would come in or i would come in whoever um i mean i I don't obviously in alberta but um whoever um, our rep is out there would come in and you know see what what your needs were um assess you know the, the business the company whatever whatever works best for you guys and then obviously sets you up with cards and whatnot to to use our gas stations or, or card locks, and uh, you end up saving a, a fair bit of money depending on how how it all works out on the deal. Yeah, well, especially but, when you got a lot of trucks or or yep. units or vehicles or whatever too, right? Like, cause it's like little, like a couple cents off of each liter is gonna add up to a lot in the long run for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and they they've got some big tanks too, right? So. It's just that, and even it, it's even time too. So it's better than having to go to a traditional gas station, and you know, all of a sudden that person sees their buddy and they're talking for 15, 20 minutes, and you know, they're going to get a coffee, they're doing this. It's like you know, you go into the card lock, you get your fuel, you're on the road again. So, as we all know, time is money, and and uh, time can be very expensive. Yeah, no, for sure. Hey, uh, so how did you get linked up with Billy? Like, obviously, it's not that hard to get linked up with Billy. (laughs) (laughs) Big wave. Yeah. Biggest of the waves. Yeah. Um, So, yes, that's a whole other side of things. So, I mean, I've obviously stayed, um, you know, when I left racing, I left for, I kind of was cold turkey for a year or two. Um, You know, that's, I guess, well, maybe we'll go back even a bit further. So, to kind of, it kind of all links up. Um, So, I kind of found, like, in my early 20s, I was kind of just feeling a little different, a little off. And, and just, it was, things were, um, you know, I was like changing. It's like, you know, we always talk about, you know, we grow up and we mature or whatever. It's, I was changing again at, in my early twenties and I was just really angry all the time. I was really anxious. It was a lot of different things and, um, showed a lot of different behavior that a lot of people were kind of, uh, you know, they were more not, not concerned, but they were like, this isn't clearly, this isn't you, this isn't who you are. And, uh, you know, went through the whole process and, and, uh, eventually was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So, um, so that's, you know, I could, I could talk about that for three, four hours. Like that could be like a whole process, but, uh, you know, went through the process, was, went to the doctor, um, got diagnosed and then I decided, 
you know, my ra- racing just wasn't fun for me anymore because I was dealing with this whole thing on the side of just trying to be, a no- you know, I'll use the term normal. We'll call that normal, but it's, you know, I don't like that word, but you know, it's that side of things. And then, um, you know, as we all know, as racers, uh, or any sort of competitive athlete, we want to win. Like nobody does it, any sport and puts the time in that we do to, to lose. So I would come in and, you know, be with my dad at the races or something. So I was already anxious and upset about just, just being, being myself, just being Greg. And then I'd come in and I would lose or I'd have a, sh- a you know, a shitty race or crash or something. And I'd come and throw my helmet or something, or just, it just really wasn't myself. And, and, uh, you know, it, racing just stopped being fun for me. Um, so like I said, I, I left the sport and pretty much cold turkey it because I, in my mind, I attributed these, you know, the issues I was dealing with, with racing, even though it had nothing to do with it. It was just, you know, I, I realized like, Hey, I didn't, I didn't make it as far as I wanted to in the sport. I wasn't, you know, Ricky Carmichael. I wasn't this person that I made my, myself out to be in my own head. So I just, you know, cold turkey, I was done and I uh, didn't go to any races, didn't follow the sport at all, nothing. And then uh, I started, I forget how I got back kind of into it a bit more. Um, I forget what it was. Like, I can't even remember. I've, I've had buddies that still ride and race and, you know, all the vet guys now because we're all in our, our late 20s, early 30s and, you know, buying bikes and building tracks. But uh, um, I started going to the races. Oh, because it was with Shimano. So I was at Shimano and then I thought, you know, what? like this is a good connection. It's something we could do. And, and I started riding mountain bikes and connecting with those guys and, you know, and, got me back and did a bit more. And then, um, anyway, so Billy was, is a big, uh, a lot, a lot of people don't know this, but Billy's big in a triathlon. So he's pretty fit dude. He's, he's all about re- cycling, running and all the stuff that, you know, I like riding bikes, yeah. but I hate running. And, uh, um, so I just started connecting with him at the races. I went to a couple nationals. I think I went to Gopher one year and, and started seeing some of my old friends again. And, and yeah, started connecting with Billy and, and, uh, my good friend, Jeff. So Jeff McConkey, um, I've known Jeff since I was like 13 years old or something like that. So I've known him a really, really long time. He's from about uh, 20 minutes away from my parents' house. So I think that's how I kind of got to know Billy as well as I did is through Jeff. And then, um, started going to races more obviously with Shimano and then started going on my own and then, uh, started riding a little bit. And, um, yeah, just kind of helped out, started, uh, helping Billy out the last, this has been kind of the first full year of us doing anything together but yeah we've been kind of two uh two peas in a pod <laughs> yeah <laughs> doing all this crazy stuff together and just yeah just all over the place so is that something you want to continue doing is like traveling to the races with billy and kind of getting in there with direct motocross uh honestly man i've i've really enjoyed it like it's something i always used to like make fun of jeff and those guys of being like oh you're media guys now you know you're media guys like and now i guess i'm one of them um, kind of, um, you know, I've enjoyed it. Like it's, it's been, uh, something that, you know, like I got to do some test riding this year, uh, you know, testing the Omaha's and stuff. We were supposed to do some more and obviously with, you know, COVID and things kind of screwed up that idea. So, uh, didn't get to do all that, but you know, then I got to go out West to go to the, the future West arena cross series. So that was pretty cool. And that's all because of, of Billy and direct. So, um, you know, I, I would like to continue doing it for sure. And we've been, we've been having some pretty good phone calls lately of some stuff we want to do and, um, for next year. And, um, you know, I, I kind of bring a different, different view of certain things that, that Billy doesn't have and, and vice versa. So we're, we work really well together, I think. So yeah, we've got some pretty cool stuff coming down the pipe for, for next year. It's just want to, as he, as he says, everything's been done before. We just need to do it better. uh, (laughs) it's true like i come up with an idea i'm like oh yeah billy we should do this he's like oh yeah uh, these guys did or like racer x did it or trans world did it or whoever and i'm like well let's just do it better so yeah yeah yeah, that's 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 kind of our conversations lately well i know billy like he's more yeah well just i guess that's kind of like the grain with uh motocross is is like with the media companies it's it's you tell everybody who's riding what and for how long and what kind of piston they got in their bike. And then, uh, and that's kind of it. But whereas like, especially when I was kind of getting to know you a little bit more, like we had some pretty intimate conversations at, uh, Gopher. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people like kind of with how you're saying, you feel like you might bring a little bit of a alternative view to, 
to uh, what he can put out. And I think a lot of people would appreciate uh, some of that content for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. That was, I appreciate that. Cause it's like, we, you know, and this is not a dig at anybody, uh, anybody else, but I feel like it's kind of the same stuff over and over again. Right. It's like, you know, you can only do so much if you stay within that certain box that is, that is moto. So I think you need to bring certain um, aspects from other parts of life into it. Right. I've always been a big believer in that because I've gotten away from the sport. I've, I've lived a, a very normal life. We'll call it where it's, you know, didn't have anything to do with moto. Um, you know, we're, and then with us, it's, you, you know, once you've been a, a, a motocross guy, you, you always are a motocross guy, no matter what, like it's something that makes us very different than the average person or the average, you know, stick and ball sport. Um, so when it came to Billy, I thought, hey, let's just do something different. Like, let's do like, you know, Keelan, you know, I talked about some different things and, and, uh, I want to, I want to incorporate that in, into what we do at, at direct. Um, you know, for example, we've got some, um, so my, my, that, that short film that I produced this year called revival, um, was more about me, uh, just because it was easiest to do it that way. Originally I had this big drawn out plan. I was going to involve, you know, multiple athletes and, and, you know, different locations and all this stuff. Then COVID hit and then it just became, I start as yes, everything, we start out huge and then we kind of bring it down to more like realistic proportions of what we can actually pull off. And uh, I just, I thought, you know what, let's just do it on me this year. One, it's easiest, you know, we can just pull it off and get it done. And then we'll use this as like a jumping off point for next year. Um, so we got some pretty cool, cool things come down the pipe for that. Um, I like to make it more of a series uh, for next year. So whether it's a video based series, like a, a legitimate movie or just kind of episodes, uh, you know, different things like that. So uh you know it's coming for sure it's uh um you know we just gotta make sure we get through the winter and, and see what happens next year like i don't <laughs> yeah. even know what we're if we're going to race next year or what we're yeah. doing right it's it's all over the place yeah it's kind of tough for everyone right now no one really knows how to plan for next year you can't even really approach sponsors yeah. it's a weird time yeah the, yeah it's yeah. uh Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> the no, lag, no, no, go ahead. The, the lag in the Skype kind of makes it a little difficult. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, that's obviously the big question is, like, what are we doing? It's There's nobody's talking about anything. The Triple Crown guys aren't really giving any any answers or any communication. It uh, yeah. makes it a little nerving for, for people that are trying to make plans. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, I've, so I, I can lead, I can, you know, kind of lead on or, or mention some things we got planned for next year. So, um, so through direct and whatnot, I've, I want to do a series. Have you guys ever seen that, that, um, Jerry Seinfeld does that, uh, you know, driving in cars with celebrities, like getting coffee. coffee and stuff? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Co yeah. I forget what it's actually called, but it's, it's just whatever, you know, he's just hanging out with these guys. He does it with like all these big celebrities he did with like Obama and stuff. Like it was pretty cool. I thought it was super yeah. basic. I think he had like a couple GoPros and, and just, there was driving around. Um, so I, I kind of thought of an idea to do something similar, but with bicycles. So, um, we do like say each national or, you know, during the week, cause you know, we'll see how next year works, but this year was very centralized. So everyone was very close. You know, we were all in Ontario for the, the whole series. Um, so either it's at the races or during the week and, and, uh, you know, we do a thing where uh, there's a camera or maybe say Billy, for example, whoever's in the back of a car or a truck. And then there's two people on a bicycle. So say me and, and whoever, a rider that I'm interviewing and we're just riding along, you know, just riding, talking and we're all mic'd up and we just have conversations while riding our bicycles. So, um, you know, we're working on that for next year, just kind of putting some ideas together and, uh, you know, thought that'd be kind of something cool to do. And, you know, we can, anyone can do it, right? That's the thing. We all ride bicycles yeah that's an awesome idea yeah something a little outside the box yeah a little something to attract well, different like, people those bicycle conversations get pretty good at times too oh yeah they're you awesome get good <laughs> content out of that yeah well that's usually what happens when you ride a bike too is you end up chatting for hours <laughs> yeah go up for a few yeah, extra k ride than what you're planning on yeah. anyways exactly so yeah just something like that and and uh you know end up at like a coffee shop or something or or just whatever, but just, just putting a, you know, that's a rider interview, but, um, putting a different spin on it, you know, um, that's, that's kind of where I say, like, I come up with these, 
different ideas. And like Billy said, it's already been done, but you know, let's just try to do it a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing we're working on for next year. And, and obviously once we get a better picture of, or of the whole, whole thing, um, you know, we'll put that together a bit more, but if you go yeah, to a coffee, be, if you go to coffee shops, you uh, can call your segment "Poison Coffee." <laughs> That's pretty good. I should I should start my own coffee company and call Poison Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be a huge hit. <laughs> Yeah. Probably. So yeah. So that's that's one thing we're working on, and uh, I think I mentioned this to you, Keelan, at uh, at the arena cross too. Um, you know, I'd like to to cross this off the list of of racing a national. So, um, you know, the idea of of kind of doing like a bit of a, a series on that too, super basic blogging and and whatnot of uh, kind of the build up to racing a, a national. Um, you know, we always hear so many guys uh you know in our sport and any sport in general but it's always like oh if i had that or if i had that support or if i had that bike or you know if i had that kid's money or whatever i could do it so i thought like why don't we do something where you know i'm a i'm an average joe coming off the couch i mean i've been away from the sport for like five or six years now or something like that it's uh and you know get like get the trainer get a bike and and then you know see if we can do it and just you know just to try it just just something new just something different right like yeah. hasn't been done yet i don't know actually i don't know if it's been done in canada but you know just something different we're always i'm always just sitting there on the computer just spitballing different ideas yeah that's good well yeah that might be a little more interesting too for uh for the people that uh that are watching the videos on yeah like swap moto or racer x and all you ever see is the factory pros and and how basically people are wiping their butts almost every day so that they're going out to practice and race and everything's basically handed to them on a silver spoon. Whereas, yeah, if, it, if you're just showing a guy that's that's just passionate about the sport and wants to get out and race and ride, it's uh, it, it might change a little bit of the stigma. I mean, I, I think even for myself, I'm a little guilty of it where I think I need certain things to be competitive at a certain level. And I think to an extent you do, but sometimes it's just, it's a matter of, of your mind and, and your willpower to get out there. So I agree. Yeah. It's just something di different, right? Like, you know, I, um, you know, just like I said, it's just something different. I feel like it's always, you know, between the media outlets that we have in Canada, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of the same stuff. So why not just try and do something different? You know, I'm, I want to, uh, I want to do it myself. So why not? You know, and if I don't make it, well, I, I did everything I could up until that point. And if I, you know, I get go out there and get completely waxed. Well, that was just the case, right? Like if I had the bike, I had the training, I had, you know, everything I needed and I'm just an average guy and I couldn't do it. You know? So if anything, it shows how hard you, you guys work and, and how hard, and how much effort you put in and how, how there really is that kind of that, that, that difference, we'll call it, um, you know, where you can't just come off the street and do it, uh, you know, or if I, you know, say I do qualify, like I know I'm, I'm not getting points or anything. I'm very, I don't think I can do 35 minutes, but we'll see. Um, but you know, it's, it's still a bucket list item for me. And, and then it also shows like maybe you can do it if you get the right support and, and, uh, and just, you know, like I said, it'd just be something different. Maybe people love it. Maybe people hate it. I don't know. Ah, you can do it. What if we? What if we put <laughs> on like a mock national at like at a random track, and we'll make sure that everybody just like we'll make sure Dylan Wright and Moff and all the boys Nicoletti will like ride at half capacity, and you just wax everybody. <laughs> and it's all for the show. I and then every and then everybody <laughs> on the couch is gonna be like, "Holy crap, I got this!" I need to buy, uh, you know, I need to buy that husky or whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah, you're yeah, gonna inspire. You go. That's what did it. Yeah, you're gonna instill hope. <laughs> so, that's the thing. It's like that. Uh, what's that movie? There was a movie with um, uh, what's his uh, Mark Wahlberg, and he was uh, he played that guy that like an older guy, and he he went on to play for like the Philadelphia Eagles football team or something. And he was like he was like forty years old. Oh. And just kind of walked on, and it's I forget what it's called, but that's what I think I know. Uh, Rudy, I no, yeah, I know what you're. Yeah. yeah, I know what he's talking about. Uh, I don't know. I yeah, think I call me Rudy. Yeah, that's what I is thought. That it called? was Rudy. Rudy. Yeah, I think so. No, Ru Rudy's another movie. Is but that a different is, one? That's with uh, 
yeah, this one's with uh, uh, that's with Notre Dame. He wants to play for Notre Dame, goes to school there and stuff. This one's uh, Mark Wahlberg. He's playing in the NFL for the Eagles. I don't know, I'll send you a link after just to uh, you'll, you'll, once you've seen it, you'll be like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. It was huge. Or he's like retired, um, but then he wants yeah. to make a comeback or something. I can't remember. No, he's like an average dude. Like he was like a bartender, but he played like local football, and everyone's like, "Oh, you should try. You should try out." So uh, he, he does, and he makes the team. <laughs> so see, it's movies like, like know, that that make me, me want to go racing. When I watch movies yeah, like that, I'm like, "I up. got this. I'm winning the next race." <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff on the on the go, and and uh, we're just waiting to hear, you know, how things are gonna go. I mean, it's. I've heard some good stuff, so I know those guys at Triple Crown are are going to do their best to put something on, right? It's you know I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I don't think anybody does at this point. No. Yeah. Hard blow to the sport losing Rockstar as a title sponsor. Really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it goes to show that uh, how reliant we are as a sport for in Canada, especially. I know the U.S. Uh, I still think they're doing, you know, they have like their deals with Rockstar Husky and stuff in the States and, and whatever else. I know they're still around a lot more, but I mean, it shows like, you know, one energy drink pulls the plug and like we don't have a series as of right now. I'm sure we will, but you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, what, what are we supposed to do? So yeah, it's, it just kind of shows how fragile we are and you know, we're, it's, it's huge it, to us. It's big, Excuse me, but we're also very small. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, I think it, like even the states would be pretty crushed if like Monster or any of those guys pulled out. It'd be pretty bad. It'd be tough for them to do it yeah. right away. Like, I'm sure they'd find something, oh, yeah. but you know, how long? You know, that's like up here. I feel like the time to find anything can be twice as long as it is down there. Yeah, and times of COVID too, it makes it even harder. Yeah. yeah, especially with it like dragging on for another calendar year, almost like yeah. what, what it it'll be February when we're coming up on basically the, the anniversary yeah. of the pandemic. Yeah, March, yeah. And March then the, or something. Yeah, and then yeah, March. Yeah, and then they're talking about like the yeah, va- the vaccine is going to come out, but they don't really know. They haven't released any details on like the vaccine and if it's going to be like it makes you immune to it or if you just you're still get it but it maybe you have a better immune response to it so then you'll still be able to pass it on so if that's the case then oh, we're man. still screwed well yeah. i think too isn't it there's like two is it two american companies that had produced the vaccine pfizer and modera or something like that yeah yeah and i guess they're saying yeah, those they're, two. yeah okay and they're saying that uh so whatever country that produces the vaccine has first rights to it yep so it's all going to be Americans that get it, which rightfully so. I think right, they, need yeah. it. they do need it first. Yeah. But then Shoot. it's like, yeah. where does it go after that? And who gets you know? it first? And then like, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's still a whole shit show. And then are they sharing like the, the recipe for the vaccine? To <laughs> they should, like to they should. Pharmaceutical companies or are they just <laughs> the like, oh, definitely not though. Trying to rake in all the coins. It's a monopoly know. down yeah. there for it, right? Yeah. It's probably patent on it's, it. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty wild right now. I, I was actually having a conversation with Billy uh, just the other day. We talk, you, you know, a couple times a week, and and uh, you know, on the media side of things this year, like we were trying to to really push the you know the the rules that we were put under because you know we as media you have to to kind of you know say like we're following all the rules and we're doing good and and you know because that's where people from the outside world have access to our sport is through the media that we that we are direct or MXP or whoever. Um, you know, if they're not coming to a race that's how they're getting some, you know, they may type in motocross in Canada and then they, they get, they fall on direct, for example. So they're only seeing what Billy puts out. So he was, you know, we were pretty serious about the, you know, wearing the mask and stuff because that was the rules. Um, we were talking about today that uh, if you guys watch anything from the, the minios at all this, like uh, it's been going the last two weeks. Uh, just a little bit on Instagram. Not much though. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, Florida, it's like wide open. Yeah. Like they're just like, yeah. they never even heard of it. You can have a con, you <laughs> can hold like, like an arena concert in an arena. Oh, down really? There. really? Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. Wide open. Full on football game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, like, no, like nothing. Like they're, they're, they're at the races. I don't think, uh, I've been watching some of the live stuff on TV on, on uh, YouTube through uh, Racer, Racer TV or whatever they call it. And, uh, you know, you don't see one mask. Like it's just like, and it's whatever. <laughs> like it's, you know, you can sit here and talk about it all day. 
but it's just funny how that works and you know how it affected our sport like i said we're up here we didn't have any fans so how you know it was pretty weird being at the races this year yeah it was strange definitely well it was i found the weirdest race by far was gopher because it was like the first it was like the first <laughs> feeling of what it was like gonna be like yeah and it was just so strange not having any fans whatsoever yeah but then you kind of got used to it it was like kind of chill like as the (laughs) races went on like walton was like it felt like a camping trip and then sandali was just kind of i felt like we were kind of there and didn't know what we're doing because we didn't know if dechambeau was going on (laughs) but it was just like it all seemed just super chill yeah the first round you're like what am i allowed to go to like keelan's pits or like what am i supposed to do yeah. like it's all kind of weird but yeah it was fun like it was fun it felt uh yeah it felt like a camping trip like you said really after like walton and sandily yeah it was i don't know it was just like super chill racing i felt like it yeah. was just very laid back it was different for sure which i, I think it, it's kind of who we are though as canadians and canadian moto and and uh i was talking to my dad about it the other day actually we were um I forget how it came up, but, you know, we grew up and, you know, when I, when I first got involved with it, everyone was in box fans. There was no rigs. There was no nothing. Um, and it was pretty laid back. And, and I think this year kind of brought us back to those roots. And, and like, let, we'll be, let's be real here. Like, we're not getting 100,000 people through the gates. We're not getting 10,000 people through the gates. It's, you know, the, the fans can be fairly limited. But I know Gopher has a strong following. Like, they've got everybody. That's a big deal down there. And that, ter- like, that area is, is the Gopher National. So I know... That affected them. Um, I actually went to college with a guy from down in that area. He's from a town called Delhi, and he knew about it. He knew about Gopher, and he's like, "Yeah, we go every year. Me and all my buddies, and you know, we go to the mud bogs there, and we do all this stuff." Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so it definitely did affect it for sure. I know Sand Lee's got a good following too, and, and Walton. You know, Walton's one of the biggest races of the. I think it's, it's pretty much one of the biggest races of the year, right? It's. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how many fans they actually do get because that place is in the middle of nowhere. What, Walton? Yeah, Walton. Oh, yeah. It's well, like, it's even like like Greg was saying, it's crazy how many people know about Gopher. Yeah. And then even in Walton, too, just like not so much maybe for the race, but the fact that they like put on a concert almost every year. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then there's like a fireworks show. And yeah, it's uh, it's funny how like sometimes those small towns attract pretty big crowds for these uh, like one-off events. Yeah. I know even like I was in... Uh, I was staying, uh, where was I staying? Uh, I can't remember. Bowmanville. I was staying in Bowmanville for the summer, and I remember like telling somebody that I had to go. Sorry to hear it. that. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was good. It was pretty good. Hey, actually, do you know uh, Brian Ward? Brian Ward. I know that name. Uh, he's like name. he's like an old he, moto guy. Okay, yeah, and you were at his place? Yeah, I was staying at his place. He's actually got a pretty sweet track off of... Uh, What's the what's the road that goes to Peterborough the one fifteen from the four hundred one? Yeah, one fifteen. Yeah, his his track is literally like on the corner of the four hundred seven and the one fifteen. Oh, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. can, it's right beside the four hundred seven. You can see it from the road, and you could probably almost see it from uh, the one fifteen too. There's but, a lo- it's actually a few tracks up that way. Um, like we're pretty fortunate. We don't have a ton of of moto like racetracks in, in Ontario as much as we used to anyways. Like we've got, you know, Sandali and, and then there's a local uh, Maguire's racing. Uh, they have their own little series too with their own tracks, but we've got, I think we only have like six or seven, no six maybe at the most now, like real racetracks, but there's a ton of private tracks. Like there's within 30 minutes of me, there's probably six to eight, you know, decent tracks. It gets crazy. Like he's, he, that, that guy's house is 15 minutes, 20 minutes from home. I, my place here yeah yeah no it's 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 actually it's pretty that's the one nice thing that i admire about ontario is just like maybe like the quality of of like i guess we're like we're kind of spoiled here in calgary like when we show up to calgary it's like it's a prep track every day but yeah, yeah that's kind of like all we have it's a to facility run. Yeah, it's all and it's all we have to ride really, but the one nice thing about Ontario is is like if you want variety, it's not that hard to find. Like you can 
yeah you yeah. drive 10 minutes in in one direction find a track drive 10 minutes in the other direction and you got another track to ride you just kind of got to be friends with the guy but uh yeah <laughs> and yeah. It, what i was kind of saying before though was like with gopher is like when i was staying in bowmanville there though i was i had uh just mentioned to somebody that that i think i had met at like a like a barberito or something saying that i was going to race at uh this i love barberito yeah yeah it's good <laughs> but yeah i just said i was like yeah i'm going to race at uh in tilsonburg on the weekend and they're like oh, oh go for dunes I'm like yeah yeah go for dunes it is and i just like thought that was so cool like how many people know about gopher it's yeah. crazy yeah even like the waitresses at i can't remember where we were probably in woodstock and they you just they'd ask you what you're in town for and you'd be like oh i'm just at the in tilsonburg or some races oh yeah gopher Oh yeah, I've been. I was down there last year. It's like yeah. everyone. Or somebody's like, "Yeah, I yeah. went there on my 65 when I was like 10." Yeah, it seems like everyone <laughs> you talk to and mention it to, they're like, "Oh yeah." Even in uh, where we were in uh, Ottawa, uh, it was uh, Dylan's buddy or something. They oh yeah, we went to school together. We went to uh, this. I can't remember what it was. It was some place in Ottawa, and we're talking about yeah, we're here for the races. Like, oh yeah. Uh, I used to race back in the day. Uh, yeah, I used to ride out at Bill Wright's place all the time, and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Like, just that's the way it is, man. Like, that's what it is. You know, I guess for us, it's like it's such a small, small community. Um, you know, I like I know, now I know people in in. I mean, we all know people from all over the country. It seems like you know, it's it's oh yeah, my buddy in Alberta or my buddy in BC or you know, the sport has brought us together. So it's kind of funny how that works and the U S I don't know if they really have that camaraderie that we have, you know, it's, it's you know, like every, every racer has an opinion on another racer. They either mm-hmm. love them or they hate them kind of thing. And it's, it's good and bad, you know, it's whereas the U S they'll, they'll, they can meet up at a amateur national or a pro national and never talk to, you know, 50, 60% of the guys they race against. We're here. Everybody knows everybody. And it's, you know, and then they have friends and, and whatever. It's just kind of how it's funny how that works. Do you yeah. think that like the money is what created that down there, or do you think it's just their culture, like overpopulation? It doesn't seem maybe? to be like the MXGP sound like they're quite like the states are. It sounds more laid back as well. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you think was the catalyst down there for that? I think that it's like it's like the stigma that it's like it's just so cutthroat down there. Like if you don't beat the next guy, you ain't getting picked up by that team, or mm-hmm. or like if so and so has this uh like this persona and this uh cred that they got to keep up that if they get they get beat that that they're going to lose it all or something i i don't know yeah but it's, it's just so competitive there's so many guys that are looking for rides right everything's everyone's got to be so serious i mean well you've done like as far as amateur racing goes you've done quite a bit down there like what do you think uh i th- yeah i don't really know like I was kind of young when I did it, but yeah, it's a lot of the same stuff. And like amateurs is really, I think there's so much money in amateurs that it's people get so serious at a young age and everyone's just like cutthroat. I don't know. So you think it's like the money at the young age be. that taints it? It seems like it. Uh-huh. That's what I, that's what I would gather from it. I don't know. Yeah. Cause like when yeah, I was I doing, mean- when I was doing the amateur stuff in the States, they had like the extreme team green and that was like a full semi at the amateur races. And it's like, it's pretty yeah. serious. Like, it's oh, yeah. not like going to an amateur national in Canada at all. It almost seems like, but it almost seems like nowadays, like the pros now are more like kind of chill. They're yeah. all like buddy buddy now, you know? Like, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit, I guess. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, I put it on my story a while ago when uh, I think it was uh, Webb, Tomac, and like Axel Hodges or something. I think they're at. I don't know where they yeah. were. It was, it was for like a bell, like helmet shoot. Yeah. And Tomax, like uh, my new training partner. For I think Webb put that up there. He's like, yeah. there's like him and Tomax, like got, got my new training partner for the season. So that's kind of cool to see that. Yeah, like, it's kind of yeah. lightening the mood a little bit. Yeah, you wouldn't see that back yeah. in the day. But I guess there was an Instagram back in the day. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It seemed like when Ricky came in, it was just like, that's when it got real, like serious. Yeah. Everybody hated everyone when Ricky was racing and like, you know, Chad, you know, Chad Reed, my favorite racer of all time is Chad Reed for sure. And him and Stewart had beef and then him and Ricky kind of had beef. They were more respectful of each other, but him and Bubba, like they hated each other and they openly admit that. And now they're, yeah, you know, they're kind of old and retired and they're good. But 
um, you know, I, I, going back to the amateur stuff, I think it's different here than in the States because I've never heard of anyone in Canada, like selling their house and living in a motor home to go race, you know, amateur moto in Canada. For sure. I mean, That's I don't true. think I've ever heard of that. No. Whereas in the U S you hear that stuff all the time. Like we're going to, we're going to put everything we got into this. We're going to sell the house. We're going to pack everyone in a motor home. You and your sister and your brother, everybody are all homeschooled. Like it puts a ton of pressure on Definitely. these kids and, and you know, I think that's why there's so many kids that just don't make it because they just get burnt out or, you know, for every, every one kid that makes it, there's 5,000 that don't, or, you know, what that may be an extreme number, but you know what I mean? There's so many that don't probably not far and off. I think, hmm. yeah. Right. Like it's, you know, it's pretty wild and it's, it's, uh, it's like that in any sport, but I think the U S is just super cutthroat. So, um, yeah, nowadays it seems like these guys are a bit more, more chill and, I think social media has brought us closer in that aspect so they can do funny things like web, you know, my new training partner. Those guys are not going to train together. <laughs> no. Like Cooper, Webb, and Tomac <laughs> are not going to work out together ever. That'd be the but, last combination you'd ever think of. Yeah, exactly. But it's just something kind of fun. And, and you know, I think that's what's kind of brought us, like th those guys as athletes together is, uh, in social media. As you can have a bit more of a, of a voice. You're not just getting these interviews that are in a, um, this is actually something Billy and I talked about too, is that the, the, you know, the age of the magazine is pretty much gone. Definitely. Yeah. You know, we're in, we live in a world where it's instant, like we need instant secondhand information. Like we're always getting something from some sort of source or, you know, you can just post a video or a picture on Instagram and all of a sudden, you know, you're some of these big racers, they have hundreds of thousands of followers and that's now being seen by hundreds of thousands of people where you don't have to wait the next month where the you know the next uh the magazine comes out yeah and uh you know because i used to i i was talking with this the other day is that um you know i had boxes still of racer x like at my parents house my they kept them for some reason i was like dad just get rid of those <laughs> things but there's boxes and boxes and boxes them because i kept them all and then i think about it i'm like oh i remember i read this article or did this was a cool story and i'd go find it and read it again and now it's like everything is is media based yeah everything is youtube and it's this it's podcasts it's it's just changed the way we consume information oh, and yeah. uh you know so when it came to going with with uh with revival that movie i was doing it was it was something i wanted to do to i thought hey like let's do it and let's do it really really well that was my whole plan was yeah uh, i've got tons of tons of comments on the on the quality of the of the trailer and whatnot and um you know that was a full production that was uh yeah like we had the trailer this, this looks not good a, what's that sorry sorry the trailer looks good i gotta say it, it does look awesome oh cool yeah. thank you very much it was uh just something we we you know a lot of people were asking about it so they wanted to see something so we just uh i got a joel his name's joel kim was uh kind of the director behind it all and he put that together and um you know it was, it was, we shot over two days uh so that's actually shot my dad's uh, most of the trailer is shot at my dad's in my dad's garage at home. And then, uh, uh, we rode at my buddy Pete's house, which is just, uh, actually just off the one fifteen where Keenan was talking about. There's that, that highway corridor has like five or six tracks right off the, right off the highway. So, um, and we did that and we shot at my friend's gym. Like we did all sorts of stuff. So, um, we did over two days and it was like two 14 or 15 hour days of shooting and just, just hammered it out. Like it was, <laughs> It was gnarly. I was like miserable. By <laughs> I was. Yeah, I bet. It was pretty bad. Yeah. So with yeah, uh, it was, it was. So with uh, doing this movie, is it was it a lot more? Did you bite off more than you could chew, or more than you expected? Because that's what we found with this doing this podcast is like, yeah, we'll just like set up a couple microphones and I'll you know, get an iPhone camera, and next thing you know, we got all kinds of stuff, and it's a whole operation. How has that been, kind of, with uh, creating the movie? Uh, it was definitely a lot. Like it was, I, I knew that, you know, there's, there's so many ways you can do it. You can do it pretty budget, you know, where you're just filming with like a GoPro and, you know, you're using iMovie or something and you can, you can come up with something pretty decent quality, way better, you know, than you could even six months ago. Um, you know, I feel like GoPro is dropping a, you know, a new, new camera every, every couple months. Faster than um, the iPhones. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't even own a GoPro cause I'm like, why would I buy one? Cause they're just going to come out with another one <laughs> yeah. a month now anyways. Um, but, uh, you know, you can do it that way or you can do it kind of the way we did it. We had like, we had a crew, we had multiple cameras, we had lighting, we had all this stuff and it was, it was quite expensive and it was more than I, 
the cost was a lot more than I associated or when I originally thought of, of doing it, but it was like, you know, we either go big or we go home. Like mm-hmm. that was kind of, I was already so into it that I was like, I don't want to do some budget film and that's nothing against anybody else. It's that's tried to do it before, but it was like, I want to do something different. Something that hasn't really been done in Canadian moto. This topic hasn't really been covered and I want to do it right. So, um, yes, yeah, so that was, that was kind of the, the way of doing it, but yeah, it was, it was a lot, but, um, it was cool. It was really neat how the industry kind of accepted it too. I wasn't really sure how I knew that there'd be people that would be on board with it for sure. But it was, uh, one of those things where you're just not sure, right? Because it's never been really, never really been done. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. So, um, and like you guys just had JC on, on uh, the podcast a couple, yeah. like two episodes uh-huh. ago, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and that, Oh dear. Oh. See up until this year. Like I didn't know when our paths had kind of crossed before, um, a little bit. So we didn't know this, but when Fox was originally, uh, distributed in Canada by a company called Aurora cycle supply here in Ontario, um, JC worked for them out West. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was, I actually got all my, I was a Fox guy for, well, I was actually a shift guy for like most of my life. Like as soon as that stuff came out, I was in it. And, uh, so then when I reached out to, to JC and said, Hey, you know, this is what we're doing. Uh, what do you think? He was like, no questions. Like, what do you need? Like just super cool. And I was really kind of worried about that. Cause I didn't know how a big company like Fox would take on something that's kind of, you know, a little bit gray area when it comes to mental health, as we all know, there's a, a bit of a stigma around it. And mm-hmm. he was like, Nope, I love it. We had one phone call, uh, phone conversation. He was like, yep, yeah, whatever you need, like pick your colors, pick what you want. I got you. And I was like, hell yeah. Like this is sick. And then, uh, um, Jake from, uh, Oakley. So Jake Trottier from, from Oakley was a, I was a big Oakley guy too. I love Oakley. It's just been, that's the brand that I connect with when I connect with eyewear. And, uh, same thing with him. He, I reached out to him and I wore Oakley in the past and, and he was like, yeah, whatever you need. And then like two, three days later, it was a box of stuff in my, my house. It was, it was pretty cool. And then, um, you know, as Keelan knows, and I don't know if everyone else knows, but, uh, like Brent Carlson from Carlson racing, Brent and Trev. Um, I didn't know Brent up until this whole thing. And, and, uh, the Husky connection kind of worked out that way as, as you know, those guys are the big, the big Husky team in Canada. <laughs> we'll call it <laughs> the, the, what did, uh, I think Davey called it the, the Husky circus one time. And I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> he called it like a traveling circus. And I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's true, but uh, <laughs> it, it it is, and that's not it's not even like that's not even a diss. That's a, like a r- actual quite a compliment, I think, because you guys pulled off a pretty good, uh, pretty good setup this year. But anyways, yeah, Brent and Trev uh, had a good conversation with Brent, and Brent was like, he was like, "What do we need to do? I'm on board, 100." percent Like it just really kind of made me realize that this sport is full of so many really support. I guess I don't even know how I'm gonna say it. Really supportive and really positive people. Um, that are like, if you come to them with an idea that's going to benefit people, you, you know, and you're not doing it for a selfish reason, they're like, we're in, um, you know, Allison from, from Husky was, got me a bike. I was, well, I think one of the only guys on a 2021 Husky this year. So I had a 21, 350. I know you guys are real jealous about that, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how it goes. But, uh, um, you know, it was cool to go and, and, uh, you know, and, and like guys like JSR from the KTM side, I've known JSR like my whole life and, you know, and he was really supportive of it. And, you know, just if I need anything from the rig, you know, just even, I, I don't know how many Red Bulls I stole from that rig this year, but, but, uh, I think at one point he actually told me I was drinking too many. It was like bad for my health. <laughs> was, he, he wasn't concerned about me taking them. He was just like, Greg, like, you know, maybe have a coffee or something, man. And I'm like leave me alone but no he was he was cool and <laughs> a red bull days and, uh, yeah <laughs> you need was, help uh, yeah it was... <laughs> no it was pretty cool it was just it was a really good experience it was really cool and i'm kind of like rambling on but it was just it's it's really this first time i've really talked about it um kind of after the fact so um you know it's been uh, i just talked to jc today actually so um you know we're we're playing some bigger stuff for next year and and a lot of the same people are on board and um, you know, we'll just wait and see how it all goes, but it was, it was awesome. It was a cool experience and getting to come back to the sport and, and, you know, I wasn't like a big time racer. I wasn't somebody that was known for my racing results or, or anything like that, but I, 
I started to get known for, for doing some different things. So, um, you know, I hope that people will enjoy it when they see it and, and it's only about five or six minutes long, so it's not super long, but it's just long enough, I think. And, and, uh, you know, I, I hope it kind of changes the way people look at, at things and especially with moto and, and it's so close to my heart and the people in it are so, so close to me that, um, you know, they, it changes how they, they maybe think about things a little bit more. What did, sorry, I just, uh, left there for a minute, but, uh, <laughs> did you say when, the when it's, uh, coming out? Yeah. So we're looking at, uh, mid December, uh, rollout. So we're like, I'm thinking like the 15th, I'd hope for that it can be done by then. And, um, you know, it's, it's crazy how when you're working a, a, like a full-time job and stuff and a week goes by and you're like, Oh, oh shit. Like I haven't even had any updates. I don't even know what's going on. And, uh, and like we're already at the end of November. So yeah. I know, uh, I've, I owe Allison from Husky an email to, uh, to let her know. So she can, she really wants to get behind it and, and promote it. So I'll let everybody know uh, when it's, you know, but like we're saying December 15th is probably the, the best, best time. Nice. Are you going to have a big, like outdoor COVID premiere? <laughs> No, we're just gonna have a huge shaker indoors, no mask, no, no <laughs> physical distance. <laughs> no, nice. no, get united that. No, I'm just kidding. Go to the green no, zone. Gonna, yeah, everyone, everyone, come to the green zone. We're, we're wide open here. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do something. We're gonna do something here. Billy will be there, and and uh, you know, we got to kind of see how how the next couple of weeks go with rollout of of you know if we go into a different zone or whatever the case may be, but. Um, I definitely want to do something. So, uh, then it'll go on direct and it'll go, uh, so race Rex shared it. So they were going to share the, the actual, yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, dude, that was, that was huge for me. Like as anybody, you know, growing up, we all read race Rex and stuff and it, like, it wasn't like a huge spot on their main page, but it was still right there. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's pretty cool. Like that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, one of those moments where I was like, you know, I think I've done something right. You know, it's like, uh, this is, this is, you know, you're a little bit, you produce anything or you do anything and you put your heart into it. And then you're like, I wonder how people are going to receive it. I wonder what people are going to think about it. And then, uh, you know, you see it on racer X and you're like, all right, I think I did something. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it was, it was, you know, I wasn't sure there was, there wasn't any comments underneath it. I was always worried. I was like, Oh shit. Like what, who's going to say something on the internet, but um, you know, I didn't put it on vital or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> left it, uh, left it off the forum. I, uh, yeah, no, I, I, uh, Jay Moore actually, uh, Jay is an old friend of, of mine and my family's and, and I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago and he's like, dude, you put it on the forum. And I went, dude, I'm not, I'm not strong enough for the forum. I can't handle <laughs> I put it on vital forum. It's not half. I'll probably scrap the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't handle that. So it was, uh, no, it's been it's been good. It's been really good, and uh, like I said, I think I want to use it for a a springboard for next year. Yeah, and we'll do a lot more things. And like Keelan, like you mentioned, you and I had the, like you said, we had those conversations at Gopher, and I like to to really highlight that and do it in a in a really good and positive way. And um, oops, the phone slide down. <laughs> <laughs> Just so slowly sliding. Um, you know, I like to do something cool like that and and like highlight you know different athletes journeys because that's really what they are they're all journeys they're not even episodes it's like you know i'm 32 and it's been like at least 12 years of my life have been i mean maybe even longer been affected by this so you know i'd like to to really highlight people's journeys and and the thing about moto and sports in general is there's always a next generation coming mm -hmm. you know i hung out with, with like dexter sites for example i hung out with him at the at that arena cross and i'm like this kid's like 11 or 12 years old you know he's going to spend his majority of the next you know however many years of his life in this sport and i want to make sure that kids like him and i don't mean him specifically but just you know that the next 80 kids and super mini and all that stuff um you know they know that things are different you know and it's just all about grooming the next generation it's not just about being fast it's about being a, a good person and being uh you know uh, exposed to a lot more than maybe we were as kids right yeah well and i think too like that's that's just how the world's kind of going in general like you, you, we're so connected now and and especially from an athlete standpoint like 
for there to be any connection with your fans, you almost have to like put yourself out there a little bit, you know? Cause like, it's just, it's, there's just kind of like that, that textbook that you follow right now on in- Instagram as an athlete, like you just, you post the riding videos and, and whatever, and, or all your sweet sponsors. But like, if you want to stand out above the rest and, and kind of, and really provide some value to, to the people that follow you and care about you and that, that are your fans, you kind of, that's kind of what the people are looking for, you know, like they, they want that intimate connection with, with, like they want to be there on that journey with you. And, and that's, I feel like that's kind of the trend that's starting to pick up is, is these, like you start seeing these little docu-series or, or, mm-hmm. or whatever, especially on like Red Bull TV. Like I, I love watching Red Bull TV because then I get to watch like other athletes and their struggles and their challenges and, and you don't feel alone, but it's like, I think everybody wants to see that, you know, like everybody kind of wants to live a little bit vicariously through mm-hmm somebody else's journey and i just i just kind of think that's how that's that's the path that uh sports are taking is it's is it's i think you almost got to open yourself up a little bit in a in a in a a, a digital world i think that's pretty universal across like even developing yourself in the the business world or like let's say the oil the oil field right like the guy who puts himself out there he's gonna not only gain the attention but People want, like you said, they want to support people. They want to get invested in their lives when they know something about them. Yeah. Somebody's not putting themselves out there. You don't know anything about them. Why would you get behind them? You don't mm-hmm. have any real reason to, right? So, yeah. like you said, you put yourself out there. People want to support that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why the vlogs are getting, like, they're so popular these days. Like, all the rider vlogs, I know tons of people will just love to watch those. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like... You get you feel more connected to them, right? You're yeah. you're seeing more of what's going on rather than just an Instagram post of you throwing a whip or whatever. Yeah, the the little details go a long way with yeah. people nowadays. Yeah. It's uh, and there's it's almost like with yeah all that access to all this content, it's people are just yeah I guess you just kind of get greedier and greedier with it. Like you want to see more and more and more and more. Whereas yeah. maybe in uh like like let's say bringing it back to a moto sense like back in the like carmichael days like there wasn't really social media right so that you let's say you bought a ticket to a race and you built up all this hype just to hype just to see carmichael for that one one moment and and that's all you thought about all year yeah but now it's like we like we open our phone and we can see them right then and there so we kind of get a little bit greedier to see more and more and more like we want to know like the dirty details of all these guys or every little detail about these guys oh, yeah it's like oh, we lost them <laughs> it's no, like I'm still here. Sorry, it's like we're more we're like more connected in a sense but we're kind of more disconnected in a sense because every everything's just on social media and you're not really getting those same connections as you would if you were like i think it was probably more common before social media to go and like actually talk to someone or Mm -hmm. really connect with someone so it's like seeing these little things kind of brings that back a little bit and you want to i guess see more i don't know yeah and that's kind of like well like what greg and i were talking about when we're at gopher is just like i kind of opened up to him a little bit about because i kind of heard uh what he was trying to do and what he was trying to put out there and i opened up to him a little bit because i'm like i'm all about that like i just like i like i think that's what makes athletes so great is like we all go through a certain level of struggle like everybody's journey is different but we all we all cha- like are faced with these challenges from day to day week to week month to month year to year and uh and i think like f- those can be cool stories to tell and 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 i like greg was kind of saying that uh he wanted to kind of put that out on a platform for people you know and like you're saying right now like you want to you want to showcase people's stories like i yeah i just i'm i'm all about that especially with with yeah the digital age we're in right now and how far it's come well i think the vast majority of people are gonna relate to it in some way or another right like they might not share that direct experience with you but they're gonna relate to it so they're gonna keep coming back to seeing it right and they're gonna want to see more of it because you want to see stuff that you relate to in your life right Mm -hmm. yeah exactly 
I think it brings everyone back to like like kind of like level playing field in a way. It's you know we look at guys like like you, you mentioned Ricky or you know uh, Bubba Chad like anybody now Tomac whoever um, you know these guys are looked at you know you know I'm talking you guys are you know current pros and and then we look at those guys and you know you're still both professional motocross racers but you know this is not a dig at you guys but like you know Eli Tomac is like <laughs> you know he's, another, he, he's like those dudes are like another another level like that's a, and that's that's nothing to, to be ashamed about or anything but it's it kind of brings everybody like if he starts talking about dealing with his own you know version of mental health or whatever case may be it brings everyone kind of back yeah to here again yeah you know yeah, where totally. it's, it's and that was my 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 plan for everything was to kind of level that playing field and bring everybody back to to center because you know we, we like you've mentioned we in a digital age where we're just it constantly trying to consume information and, and content it's it's uh you know whoever would have thought like five years ago there'd be people getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for a, a job to be a social media manager for companies mm-hmm. and stuff like all they do is handle social media that's a job mm-hmm. It's like it's like uh, what I saw the other day was on. Uh, I think it was like Snapchat or something. It said like you joined in like 2014 or something. I'm like, holy crap! It's 2020. I've had Snapchat for six years. And <laughs> it's done nothing. It's done nothing for my life. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> we use that stuff every day, and it's you know. And so yeah, it's just kind of funny how this works. But yeah, I really thought it's like this is the time to do it and 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 kind of create a platform. And it's always going to be an evolving process and. And, uh, you know, it's never going to be, I don't think it's always going to be perfect. We're going to get there. And, and, uh, you know, Keelan, like you said, you, you reached out. I know, you know, Sam Gaynor has talked a little bit too publicly about what he's gone through. And Jared, you know, you, you mentioned a few things and, you know, you didn't get to do that, that big crazy yeah. ride back to, uh, Alberta yet, but yeah. I'll, I'll use the term yet. Yeah. There I'm you sure go. I want to do it. Still want to do it. Dude, that, that is, uh, that's gnarly. Like that is just so... <laughs> so gnarly but uh something actually i'll touch on is i got into cycling pretty pretty hard and really kind of got into the cycling world because i found that um and you guys i'm sure can connect with this too is when you're kind of dealing with stuff you you kind of get down in that deep dark hole and you don't really realize that what's you know what you, can, you have no control over how you're feeling but i found with cycling you know there's controlled efforts and you know like okay i'm gonna go this hard in this interval for 30 seconds or a minute and it's gonna be the hardest thing you've done you know in weeks or a month or a year you're ready to puke you're gonna you know whoever knows you know putting out power and serious wattage and then it's over you're like well i beat that you know i beat that i've 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 got through that you know and and, um you know training physically of some sort like it's all sustainable or not it's a attainable goals and it's like you know what i'm getting through this and i'm you know i know when i went through some of my deepest darkest times you go down that hole and you don't think you're ever going to get back out of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I found that like cycling for sure was something I noticed. And even, uh, you know, it's kind of funny, but even like getting tattoos. So I find with tattoos is like, once you start, you've got to finish. Yeah. It's, you yeah. know, it's, you know, or if you got this weird line on you, that's <laughs> like, you know, why do you have this line or whatever it is? And, uh, I really enjoy that process because it's like a little mini win, you know, you're winning. Cause you're just like, you've, you made it through that. So if I can do this, I can do anything. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I've, I've really kind of connected with that and it's been a form of therapy for me, like cycling and, and other, other forms of stuff like that. Cause we all know it can, can go very, uh, you know, you can use other forms of therapy that are not, yeah, not as good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cycling for me was great when I was like, probably in my darkest times. Cause it was just like, you could go out there and you're just struggling and, all you like you're just if you're when you're doing like an interval like you're saying like it's all you're just in that moment there you're not thinking about anything else it's just how much you're suffering right now and it's just awesome yeah. it's even like, yeah because you, you're gonna get through it right yeah so yeah you, you, and you, yeah. you know in your head you're gonna get through it but during that split second you know save like a sustained effort of 30 seconds you know one second time stamp there you're like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, pardon my language, I'm going to fucking die. Like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. And it's physically hard, mentally hard. It's emotionally everything. And you're like, you get through it and you're like, I did it. I got to do it again. So let's go at it. Mm-hmm. You know, you get physically and emotionally and mentally stronger from stuff like that. So 
I just, I don't know. I've really connected with that. And I've, I've been a big, uh, pre, you know, kind of a preaching of, of the, the bicycle world for, you know, for whatever, whether it's mountain biking or road cycling, whatever, um, can be really beneficial. I think pretty much any type of physical activity, like, like a lot of people may not want to get into cycling, but put on a pair of shoes and you can get the same effect out of it by running. And I know a lot of people hate running, but just do anything really. Yeah. Anything that kind of challenges your focus, you know, like, or demands your focus. But I suppose the hard part of that is like being able to push yourself to that, that point where you're, like you said, you want to die on the bicycle, but I think a lot of people have a hard time pushing to that point even. Well, we're so accustomed to it because we do it every time we're on the track, right? It's, So I think it takes a while to like get to that point of like being able to and then willing to push yourself past that and point wanting of, like, to wanting to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's weird, but it's kind of it. like the best feeling ever. Oh, too. it's awesome! I love yeah. it. I love it. It was uh, it was kind of funny as I, you know, I th- when we were filming Revival, so we're riding at this track and, um, you know, I I had more fun during that day of riding than I think I've had in like 10 plus years it was just so much. i even ended up crashing too i crashed pretty hard i <laughs> laughed it off my sister's got it on video not the crash but the after effects and i was wearing my i had this white uh white and gold shift gear i hadn't wore it all year i saved it for this shoot and i'm like jc gave me a black set and a white set so i was wearing my black stuff all year and then i was like all right i'm gonna save the white stuff because i don't want to get stained i want to be perfect and uh it just happened to be this like drop down and then he turned and kind of 180 back up i was hitting this rut and I was just, I mean, I felt like a superstar. I probably wasn't going that fast, but I hit the rut and I kind of come up and you go up this huge face and do this like cool step up. It's actually the end of the, um, of the trailer is like, that's the, the, the jump. So you kind of come up in this nice cool step up anyway. So I'm in the bottom and there's this bit of a mud, like not really, it's just kind of greasy. It's not really muddy. It's just a little greasy. And I happened to just catch my front end out of the rut and I slid out and I just did a full front flip over the bars and landed right in the mud. My white gear. <laughs> it was it was brutal, but I had I was laughing. Like I had so much fun, and it was. Should have put that thinking in the about trailer. It. This is what it's. I uh, I'll, you know I'll, I have it on my phone. I'll send you the after stuff, and you can see how dirty I was. <laughs> I'll text it to you, and you can show the guys. But uh, um, but I just had so much fun doing it. I was like, you know, I was hitting the same corner like 20 times. I was hitting jumps and it was just like, this is what it's all about. And I'm so glad that, that I can do this. You know, that's what was kind of the coolest part. And I remember being a kid and being down on myself for maybe not doing as well as I thought I would. And my dad is, you know, like uh, dads are such a, uh, you know, parents in general are such a big part of our, our racing careers. But my dad would be like, you know what? You're like one of only, you know, He's like a few hundred people in this whole country that can go out and do this like 120 foot jump. He's like, you, he's like, I couldn't do that. My dad's ridden motorcycles his whole life. He's hung out with guys like Roger DeCosta and stuff like that. And he's got a whole nother like backstory. My dad's got a pretty cool story to, to be involved with, with motorcycles and motocross. But, uh, you know, he's like, I could never do that. You know? It, so it kind of like, you don't think about that. And as I'm doing this video and, and, and doing the same stuff, I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. Like this is a lot of fun. And, it was like a culmination of everything. Everything kind of came, you know, we've been worried about filming and the weather got really weird for a while. Like it was super hot in the summer and then it got really kind of wet here in Ontario uh, in the fall. So we were just trying to like dodge the, the storms and uh, just turned out to be so much fun. Like my dad was there. My sister was there. My sister didn't come to a lot of races growing up. She's uh, like six years younger than me. So she kind of had her own life, but she was there and it was just cool to, you know, it wasn't a race. It was just riding. It was just me. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. And I think that's going to come through in the, in the final film of just how much fun it was. And, um, you know, especially that part. And, and, uh, it also gets pretty, gets pretty gnarly. I'll use that word is, um, the director who filmed it with us, uh, Joel, he, he did an interview with me and an interview with my dad in our, in our garage. And there's, bunch of old like memorabilia that my dad just has in the shop so he's got like a chad reed sign number plate and, and he's got so much stuff from t-dags it's crazy he's got like 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 jerseys number plates like he's he loves t-dags but uh um it's all in the background and there's anyway so i wasn't allowed to be in the room when my dad was being interviewed and he wasn't allowed to be in the room when i was being interviewed and apparently my dad cried during his interview 
and uh, talking about, you know, my life and stuff. And I still haven't seen it. I have not, I'm not allowed to see that part. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. Like it's going to be pretty raw and it's going to be, I think that's not the intention to make people sad or anything, but I think it's, I really wanted to hit the point of, you know, kind of coming down and then just kind of show like, you know, we've been through it all and then kind of come back up on the other side. And that's where the, the riding part comes into it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And that, yeah, for sure. And that's, and I think everybody's going to relate to that to some point, you know, like, and it's kind of, it's kind of exciting for you too, you know, like, uh, having an, a part of the movie that you haven't even seen yet. But, uh, like, I think with, I don't see, I've only seen the trailer. I haven't seen anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, I think that was part of the plan for them, uh, with Joel and stuff is to, to kind of have me see it, I guess, at the premiere and, and uh, probably lose my mind because I haven't I haven't seen any of it. He won't show me. He just kind of tells me, yeah, we're at this point or this is that. And um, that's something else I learned too is you know, guys are talking about having, you know, starting a podcast and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, we'll just do a couple mics and this and that. It's like we took three hours of dialogue and, and Joel's like I had to basically bring it down to five minutes and then, you know, tune it up with the video and, you know, edit this and clip this and all these different things and, um it takes a long time. I didn't realize it took this long. Yeah. But I think a, a lot a, yeah, a lot of people are going to relate to that for sure. Like it's it's going to be like I mean all, even all three of us sitting here uh, we've I'm sure we've all had our challenges with with our parents growing up racing and then our own personal struggles and and uh yeah, kind of going back to what we were talking about with with people just wanting to look for something to relate to and not feel like they're alone and and this this might be a a good a good uh piece of content to put out there and 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 hit people where it counts yeah i can't wait to watch it yeah i appreciate that guys a lot that, that means a lot to me because like i said it's it's it uh you know I'll, I'll admit it i was like i said i was pretty you know frustrated and kind of exhausted by the end of it all because i went I went to a pretty dark place that I hadn't been to in a long time. You know, you're talking about stuff that you don't talk about every day and, and, uh, you know, it, it gets pretty, it got pretty gnarly. Like, I don't know, I don't know how other word to use, like what other word to use, but it's, uh, you know, there's one point where I was like, man, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like during the filming, it it got pretty bad. Like it was, um, you know, talked about, we talked about some pretty serious topics that, uh, um, you know, like suicide and stuff that you don't really talk about, you know, at all ever. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the whole point, right? Is it's very raw and it's very much, uh, um, you know, I, I want it to be that way. I want it to be that people are going to be like, man, that was, that was good. Like that was serious. That was hard to do. Um, you know, cause I didn't want any part of it to be too polished or, or come across fake. Right. right? So there's no point in doing this if, if it comes across, um, you know, uh, not genuine because I consider myself to be a pretty genuine person and, uh, you know, to a fault at times, but I'd rather be that way than, than, than not be myself. So yeah, totally. It's yeah, scary. It's, be... it's scary putting yourself out there for sure. Like yeah, I know, I know what you was... mean when you say you almost like wanted to quit filming like halfway through, uh, through, produ- or f- through making it. Cause I wrote up a little blog post and it wasn't even anything negative. It was just trying to be all positive. And that, there was lots of points where I'm like, I don't even know if I want to put this out there. Like, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't know. It's scary. It's uh, it was, it was a lot for sure. And I was like, all right, we're already here. And you know, we've got some financing and, and stuff. And I was like, I, all right, I, I got to do this. Like I got to do this and you know, come hell or high water, it's going to happen. And, and uh, we're going to get through this. And, um, it was pretty cool. Like we were back at my parents' house in, in Bethany, which is a super small town. It's like 300 people. And, uh, you know, I grew up there and, and my sister, like I said, was there for the, that part too. And we were goofing around and, and it was just, it kind of brought it back to like being a big family again. And, you know, like I said, I'm 32. So it's, you know, I'm kind of on my own, like not on my own, but I'm, you know, I'm an adult and it's, it's kind of, it was just fun. Like we were goofing around back at home and there's some clips. I'll send you a clip too of, uh, uh, I was on a mountain bike and I threw my, there's my parents' house and in the garage and there's like a little alleyway between the two and I was trying to bunny hop up the steps between the house and I just kept eating it. Like I kept, I, I come in and try to bunny hop and I, I wasn't clipped in or anything. So I, I'd fall, my sister was sitting there filming me and laughing at me and stuff. And I was, uh, it was just pretty fun. Like it was, but then it, like I said, it got pretty, pretty serious, pretty quick. 
but you know, it's uh, been nothing but positive. I've had uh, nobody say a, you know, a negative word at all. So it's been, uh, it's been good. Well, we can't wait to see it. Could be good. Yeah. I've no, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to, uh, to send you guys, uh, you know, your own, it'll be on direct and, and stuff too and, and whatnot, but, uh, you know, everyone will see it and then I'll, I'll send you your own, uh, your own links to, uh, to when it comes out. Like I said, nice. a couple of weeks now would be middle, de- middle December and, uh, you know, it should be, uh, should be pretty neat. Hopefully it doesn't get put on vital. <laughs> <laughs> I just, <joking. laughs> no, but could you, I just couldn't do, I wanted to, cause I'm like, man, this will really like bump the hits up. Like there's, there's going to be tons of people watching it. And then there's going to be some guys who are just going to fucking rip it apart because they're jerks, right? Like uh, there will always those forms be. forms are just yeah. They're they're all, gnarly. Yeah, they're, they're the worst. There will always be those negative people, but you can't really focus on that, really. But I think some of that no. goes back to what you said. Like, if you're being genuine with it, a lot you get a lot less of those people. When Definitely. you're not genuine with that something, I think you get a lot more people just willing to attack it because yeah. they can just see right through you, right? Yeah. Or if they do attack it, they're probably going through their own shit yeah, themselves. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's definitely been uh, it's been super positive, and I can't, you know, it's it's I've had people that I didn't really even know, um, you know, like Abby to Instagram or send me a message or or whatever, and and say like, hey, this is really cool, and you know, I really like what you're doing with this, and and it's kind of you know, mental health and the topic of mental health can. It can be, you know, one of two ways. It can either come across extremely genuine, or it can come across not, you know, the exact opposite. Like you're trying to to get into something that's almost emerging now. If that makes any sense, like a lot of mm-hmm. people um, are not that genuine about it, right? They're going to come out and say, "Oh, like this, this will get me noticed more," or something of the case where it's like. But then there's a lot of people, you know, that like both you guys right there. You know, we've had we've had some pretty like Keelan and I've had some pretty good conversations and. Jared, you know, you've put your, your story out there and it's, it's, it comes across very genuine. That's, that's what we all want. Um, but like I said, there's definitely been some cases in not so much motocross, but other sports and in the mainstream media where it's like, you know, these people are just chasing, uh, I don't know what the kids call it these days, but chasing clout or something like that. They're, you know, they're, they're looking for just, they're just looking for something. What's the term um, for that? Zealots? Isn't that what the term is for that? Z- what? Ze- ze- zealots? Is that the term? Zealous? Oh, I got no idea. Like know. somebody being overzealous? Like yeah, I think it's related. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Probably the wrong guy to ask. That was a, that. That was a, that was a, that was a big stretch, but like we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> well, I don't know. People yeah, trying to like gain attention for just like the sake of gaining attention. That's the yeah, clout, that's the best bro. way to put it. No. Yeah, getting, getting for the followers. Yeah. It's all about the followers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, so, uh, go ahead. Uh, so with uh, in your movie, you talk a little bit, a little bit about concussions. Do you want to maybe tell us about your own experience a little bit with concussions, or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's something that you know we as a, as a sport, we, it's kind of coming. Well, not even it's just our sport, but I mean, like you look at the NFL, you look at a lot of these different uh, sports where where concussions are obvious. You know, we hit our heads, like it's. It's funny to look at is like with motocross you know we're, we're riding like 200 pound machines and we're not connected to them you know we're holding on to them excuse me and we're you know we hit the ground like there's nothing stopping us from hit, like we hit the ground with full force and uh you know we're gonna rattle our, our skulls and and uh you know i've had a few pretty big concussions i got landed on actually when i was in junior so it was like 2000 and I don't even know how many years that's, that's there's a concussion issue right there. Um, I can't even remember, but uh, I I'd crashed and it was a double double, and I I wanted to try to triple single it and uh, slid down on the face, and then ended up uh, like cartwheeling over the second double, and the flagger, you know, didn't have a time to put the flag up, I guess, or I don't know what happened, and a guy came over as I was just getting up and landed right on right on my back and my helmet, oh. and I was out like I was out for minutes. Um, I don't remember that day. I don't remember like the week before week afterwards, like it was pretty bad. And that was definitely my worst one. Um, you know, and then I'm trying to think like even before that I've had, I had a couple of crashes. I remember coming off the start with another guy and, and, uh, this is back, like I said, probably junior days. And, and, uh, he went like, I don't know what he was doing, but we went out straight and then he went 90 degrees right across me. 
and just I was up and I was down and uh, took the visor right off my helmet. I get hit pretty hard, and uh, I was obviously down for the day. But you know, with us, it's like, oh, well, we're back the next weekend. This is going back like 2004, 2005. You know, we're we're right back to it. And nowadays, it's like there's whole concussion protocols and different stuff like that. And you know, I, I know there's no real concrete evidence at this point to to link the two, but I definitely think that there's been some issues um, w- related to mental health from concussions. Like we've, you know, um, look back to uh, you know Dave Mirror, for example, and mm-hmm. uh, C- with CTE. So he, you know, he committed suicide, and they directly linked that to his concussions and, and the issues of how it affected his brain. So, like I said, I don't have any concrete evidence to say that that's, you know, how I ended up where I am, but I definitely think, you know, it didn't help. That's for sure. I think there's definitely enough cases of it. Like I've, I've had, I've had my issues with concussions and mental health. Keelan's had his stuff with concussions, and it's like there's too many cases of the same thing happening to ignore it. And I think like as racers, like I even found myself in a little bit of a like thing this year when like I hit my head pretty hard at Gopher. But I was so invested in the season and I didn't, I didn't like, I was so in denial about it that it was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You convince yourself you're fine until all of a sudden you realize you're not fine. And then, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard to see it until you're on the other side of it. You can look back and be like, okay, yeah, I definitely was not okay then. So I don't know. It's, it's like, I like what you're saying in your trailer about like how it's not talked about enough. I think the more we talk about it, the the more awareness it brings to people and maybe people can check themselves a little more. I don't know. I think as athletes, you know, especially with moto because it's, it is something I'm so connected to, but with athletes in general, like we always have to be at our best and we always have to, you know, it's a weakness, right? Like it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. My shoulders kind of jacked up because I'm going to look at like I'm, I'm weaker. And, you know, moto is one of those sports that is so dynamic. It's not a, there's so many different factors that can take that can contribute to doing well or doing doing poor, um, but you know we don't ever want to talk about it really, right? Like you always have your inner circle of guys or teammates or whoever family, but you don't go around talking to everyone saying, "Oh yeah, you know I crashed this week and I'm all jacked up," and you know you, you don't really, you know I don't think we really do, right? It's it's especially in in contact sports like hockey and stuff, you definitely don't mention it because there's guys that are going to just dive bomb for your knee or or whatever the case may be right um so it's just something we don't talk about with head injuries it's it's crazy it's because it can be there can be no symptoms or there can be symptoms for months you know we look at guys uh who was a big one in the states at concussion was a bogle i think had a lot of them yeah yeah he's been he's been out for months at times and like and then you got all the guys we talk about forums and stuff and they're saying, oh, you know, he's not worth this and he's, you know, just sandbagging and blah, blah. It's like, dude, like he could be, you know, like I, I saw an interview with him the other day and he's like, I couldn't even turn on the lights without sunglasses on because he's like, it, it hurts so bad. And I'm like, I, I can believe that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you, you tell me that, for example, with like, like with bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder is if you don't know um, really much about it, it's actually your brain is functioning differently than the average brain. So for me, they find that my brain through testing and stuff like that is I, I essentially function faster and sometimes better than the average person. So like I input information much faster and I, I can, that's why it's hard for me to read because my, I may actually be like, I can read obviously, but I, I can't, I pass, <laughs> I went to <through> school, <laughs> but like you're reading, uh, I just want to make sure everyone knew that. Um, <laughs> But like you can, you know, I'll be reading a, a book or something and I'll be on, you know, the second line, but my brain is already processed down like the th- fourth or fifth one. And it's, it's, I'm not even actually reading it, but my, I've skipped down that far. It's, it's crazy how it works. And like, I did a bunch of testing and different things like that. And, and they have, uh, you know, different ways of, of looking at how we do things. And anyways, what my point was, is like, you hit your head hard enough. You tell me that that doesn't affect your brain you know, or, or affect or have an effect on how my brain functions now, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a firm believer in it. Like I said, it's like, we all have concussion stories and we, you know, we all have our own things we deal with. And I think they are related for sure. 
Yeah, and uh, it doesn't have to be like always have to be like a major crash where you no. hit your head and no. knock yourself out for two minutes to have major effects. Like, yeah, it's it's uh it's kind of weird. Like every concussion is quite a bit different, especially in my or in my case, anyways. Uh, well, I know, I know they say that the more you have, the easier they are to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, and I'm I'm a firm believer in that too. And like that's why if you don't uh, take the the, the pr- appropriate time for this phone keeps sliding. Um, you gotta, to, uh, you gotta get that fixed, man. I mean, this is my fir- this is my first podcast I've ever done with like on on, <laughs> you know, the media not, guy on his first podcast. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a big uh, video guy. I'm not doing the Facetimes too often or anything like oh, that. Good. Um, but no, what I was saying was, yeah, like it's there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of connections and um, something that you guys could actually watch, which I found was really interesting. I was, I, I have a real passion for surfing too. It's like my, my next, uh, you know, real passionate, uh, that I have, um, there's a story about a guy named Andy Irons, who was one of the, uh, he was one of the best surfers ever, um, from Hawaii and, uh, he had bipolar disorder and, uh, you know, serious drug addictions and things like that. And he actually passed away. Um, you know, so he, but he they had a story, uh, it's called Kit. Uh, Kissed by God. It's on Red Bull and, TV, uh, right? It might be. Yeah, yeah it should be. I've, and it yeah, came it's a out good a couple one. years ago. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, dude, it's I awesome. think it's on yeah, Red Bull TV. I'm a big TV, Andy yeah. Irons fan, and uh, I actually ended up buying it from off iTunes when it came out, and it was really cool because he talks about it, and they they have like a um, professor of psychology, I think it is, or psychiatry from Harvard, on it, and like he he talks a little bit about uh, you know bipolar disorder and mental health in general. And, and uh, like how it can really affect, like it can really physically affect you too. Um, I know with like having bipolar disorder, you're, you're, you're uh, sometimes you're you're prone to bouts of extreme creativity. So like there's some of the best artists in the world there are said in you know in the past and in you know, past times have thought to have had you know some sort of mental health uh, issue because they're like, you know, they're like well, how can they create these things? Like how can they all of a sudden you know, they're, they're, this, they're this person and all of a sudden they've created these beautiful masterpieces that we've seen, but how do you go from here to here? You know, like how do you bridge that gap? And they're like, there's only one way to, we can really think about it is that they have a, you know, some sort of, um, you know, maybe it's bipolar disorder or maybe it's not, but um, like I said, Andy Irons was pretty cool. It's a really cool documentary. You can you should show them. Um, Show it to him or send him a link or whatever, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. I think it might about. actually be on Netflix too. I don't think it's on Netflix. I, th- I don't think oh, it is. Man, I, would, I, I probably wouldn't see it. But, but, yeah, no, but, that uh, one's good. Yeah, it was really cool. So it's 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 definitely in the last few years, it's, and it's been uh, it's mental health has been much more uh, you know discussed much more uh, in in the mainstream, especially with sports and whatnot. And when it came to um, revival like my own film i wanted to have a mix of of kind of like uh andy iron's film but also uh art of flight so art of flight was still um i was fortunate enough to be at the premiere for that in toronto i got to meet travis rice and and things like that and that movie changed my life like it totally just changed how i viewed everything when it came to sports or action sports so we we really took a i know when it came to the soundtrack and the way we shot certain things it's very epic feeling so once it uh, once it does drop, you'll see it's it's uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. Awesome. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Like I said, it's gonna be uh, something that's never been done before. No, especially in Canadian moto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, honestly, that wasn't hard. It's not hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd talk to a few people about that. And, and when I mentioned it to, to Billy and stuff, he's like, oh, he's like, it's not going to be hard to beat that. And I said, no, it's not, man. Like, it's, you know, it's it's no no offense to the people that have tried before. But like I said, it was, you know, I don't want to do this if we're going to half-ass it. Let's make it big and, and epic feeling. And I wanted people to not feel like they were in school watching some sort of documentary or like, a, you know, something that they fell asleep through. I was like, I want people to watch it be like, holy shit, like that's, not only is it very informative, but it's also very cool. Yeah. You know, so I wish I could do bigger whips, but that's all right. <laughs> if I could do bigger whips, it'd be a way better video. But 
Mind if I uh, pick your brain a little bit on like bipolar disorder? Of course, yeah. By no means am I an expert, but I can tell you. Well, I'm, I know. I'm just kind of curious if if is it like like a left brain, right brain kind of thing? Like, are you activating different sides of your brain at certain parts of, or like certain times or like I don't know anything about it. Um, so it's it's very chemical based. So it's one of the the th- like it's one of the mental health disorders. Um, you know, not speaking against depression or anything else that you deal with, but it's it's very uh, physical. So it can really, I mean, yes, depression is 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 extremely hard on your body, but bipolar disorder, like I said, it affects how you 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 think and your your and how you, it almost controls your brain. So I don't know if it's more of a left or a right thing. It's kind of from what I've read and and uh, it's kind of total. So like if you they looked at um, if you were to Google like brain scans for bipolar disorder versus a you know baseline uh, brain scan, your brain is functioning and hitting like 10 times more or something like that. Like it's just, it's, uh, um, it's just functioning. And I don't, I don't mean higher level as in like more intelligent level. It's just functioning at a way different level than the average brain. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, like I said, if you were to Google it, um, it we could show you that and you can see like, it's, it's much more red whereas opposed to like, uh, cause it, it shows not, it's not heat signatures. I know that's not the case, but it's much more um, different too. colors than than your traditional kind of typical brain function um, because it is it is working differently. So how do they detect that? Is it like fMRI? Is that how they do that? Uh, yeah, and they can do like like um, EKGs. I think they are too. Like um, there's different ways of, of seeing like how your brain because uh, it's electricity based, right? So it's like your brain is is essentially functioning. Um, at different times, so they'll ask you different questions, um, different stimuli, like different uh, external stimulus, so lights and different things like that, and and then they track how how it works. So um, I was pretty fortunate to be a part of uh, what's called CAMH, which is uh, Canadian uh, this Canadian Center. It's a Center for C- CC and I don't know. Anyways, it's Canadian Center for Addiction and Mental Health, and they're they're really uh, big in Toronto. They have multiple campuses and stuff like that, and that's where I went for all my my counseling and my training and, and not, well, not training, but testing and stuff like that. And, um, I worked with like a really high up, uh, psychologist there. So I was pretty fortunate. I don't even know how I got into, I think my doctor, my family doctor knew someone and kind of got me in, into that program. But, uh, it's actually a place where you can be a resident. You can live there full time hmm. if you wanted. Um, like there's some people there that are, are much, I say less, much less fortunate than I, or other people to, uh, and they have to be there full time, like full time care and stuff like that. Um, but there's, you know, a whole another side of it that's, that's, uh, you know, just people like me. So did you go through like, like did you go through quite a few years or months, or are you still ongoing research with them, or? Uh, no. So I was there for like just over a year, um, back and forth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, for me, I found like I was on different medications and whatnot. And I found that I was, uh, you know, right now I'm actually not on any sort of medication. Um, I found that I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm better than that or, or, or that they don't work. But for me it was the negatives were, they, they far outweighed the positives when it came to, to taking that certain medications. Um, so for example, I was on what's called lithium. And uh, lift, they actually had to go monthly and get my my blood taken, and then they would they actually see the amount of lithium in my bloodstream, and then they would kind of see how it would affect my my moods and and how I acted or how I how I lived my life. Um, so they would actually test it. So that's one of the ways they can actually test and see how your um, that's one of the benefits and not a benefit, but a, a side note to bipolar disorders. They can um, your treatment is actually measurable which is a lot of other uh, mental health disorders uh, or illnesses don't have that ability um so like i said they go in and take vials of blood and then see okay um you know your lithium level is this or that and it can it's actually kind of scary because if your um lithium levels go through the roof you can actually your blood can be kind of toxic and your liver and different things will start to be affected so they have to monitor but anyways um you know, I found my own ways of therapy. Uh, so like I said, like cycling and I'm much more aware of, of where I've gotten to. So I, I can kind of, 
you know, where I can feel like more anxious some days and I know that I know it's going to pass. So I, I kind of just deal with it in my own way. Maybe it's not the most productive way, but it works well for me. And I found that that's, that that's the way I want to do it. Um, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's definitely, there's some days that are pretty, still pretty tough, but it's, you know, I'm pretty happy to be where I am and I'm very aware of where I am. And I know that things are, are, everything is, every moment is fleeting. That's the way I look at it is no matter how bad it gets, it's like, I know it's going to, it's going to be over. Um, whether it's, you know, a couple of days or a week or whatever the case may be, it's going to, it's eventually be over. And I know I can, uh, you know, I'll overcome it. So I just kind of started doing my own thing and, 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 uh, been, pretty pretty happy with it so far so um yeah a lot to talk about but yeah well i think yeah you you build your blueprint and you and you kind of shape and mold it as you go along but there's nobody else that's going to be able to do that for you exactly and that's uh the one the i'll say one of the negatives regarding this and i I try not to be too negative about it but is there's it's still an always evolving process like there's no there's no like you said you use the term blueprint there's no like okay this person has been diagnosed with this this is what we do it's it's not the, like yes there is protocols and processes to 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 help someone but there's everybody's different you know there's four of us here right now there would be four very very different forms of treatment for any sort of mental illness whether it's depression bipolar disorder you know anxiety which is a major uh, issue now for people you know many different things um there'd be four very different treatments. So it's, it's still one of those things like it's, you know, I've broken bones before we've all broken bones and it's like, all right, put in a cast or go have surgery and six to eight weeks, you're good to go, you know, do a little bit of, do a bit of, uh, you know, rehab. None of us did it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and you'll be good to go. It's like with head injuries or even with a mental illness, it's ongoing. And, uh, it's so during the, uh, during the planning stage of all this, when I was presenting uh, the deck to, to potential sponsors, one of the uh, quotes I had, and, and it was, uh, my whole life I identified as a motocross racer because that's all I'd ever done was race motocross, and you know, and and that's what made me kind of different than my friends, and and uh, you know, made me who I was, and that's what I was like, yeah, I'm Greg Poisson, you know, and I race dirt bikes, you know, we've all said that, and now because of this diagnosis, it's like. A, I'm now a mental health patient and I will be for the rest of my life. Like that's, that's the, uh, that, that was probably the one of the hardest pills to swallow is that it, you know, on all my medical records now for the rest of my life is that I have bipolar disorder. It doesn't go away. You know, I could, I could not feel a symptom for the rest of my life and I could, you know, forget all about it. And it still says that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, so that was, uh, that's tough. tough. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, and kind of going through, you know, on a quick side note is, is, um, when I, dad work in Honda, so he, he actually has cancer and, uh, um, he has two, he had two different forms of it. So he had uh, kidney cancer and then it metastasized onto his lungs, um, when they removed one of his kidneys. So we had kind of had this, this parallel experience where, you know, I was dealing with my own illness. He was dealing with his and, you know, and, and we kind of talked about that and I was really, I'm really fortunate. That's why my dad is, is so involved with my movie um, because he was there for everything. Um, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, absolutely everything. And my dad is, is a huge support of mine. And, um, you know, we, so we talked about that, like, well, now I'm a mental health patient. Well, he's like, well, now I'm a cancer patient and he will be forever. It doesn't go away. Right. There's no cure for it. So um, it was kind of cool that like, not cool. That's not the word I would use, but it was beneficial to me to have that, that uh you know kind of experience to to go along with as well through through someone who's so important to me yeah it's it's unfortunate that it's under those circumstances but it's it kind of goes back to like you had somebody there that made it easier to not feel like you're alone exactly yeah it was huge and uh yeah so he's a he's a big part of it and and uh you know he's uh like i said he's excited for for his part too. And, and, uh, he originally wasn't going to be in the movie at all. He didn't want to be, cause he didn't know how to be in front of the camera. And, and uh, so I, uh, enticed him. JC sent him a bunch of Fox stuff. So <laughs> he has, he's got a Fox hat and, uh, and a hoodie on and stuff in it. And he, he thought that was pretty cool. So I thought that was pretty funny, but he's like, well, I got to look the part now. 
Cool. So yeah, it was uh no, it was cool. Well, thanks for breaking the ice on the whole uh mental health topic for us. I know we've been kinda we've all been kind of debating it a little bit on on uh where to start and it's obviously a difficult uh topic to cover. I know but like even when we first started this podcast, I know a lot of people kind of reached out and uh, there's probably maybe five to 10 people that said they'd like to hear stuff on, uh, on mental health, but it's just, I mean, for us in kind of a new endeavor, we didn't, didn't really know where to start, but I, I know it's something we kind of, we want to start touching on it at least. And, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, been a great opportunity for you to kind of talk about your movie and share your story and uh yeah no it's never easy i think the longer you go through those uh those challenges the easier it gets to open up about it because then it's just Mm -hmm. it, it gets it gets normalized for yourself personally but uh yeah i think it 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 takes some time to get to that point for sure like it's 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 never easy to let people into the darkest corner of of your mind so uh yeah we definitely appreciate appreciate you uh sharing all that with us and can't wait for to see it in the movie yeah yeah thanks guys i really appreciate that and you know i've uh as I say, you know, when you get nervous, you kind of ramble on and I feel like I've been doing a lot of that, but, uh, I appreciate you letting me go on and on and on again. But, uh, um, you know, it's one of those things it's, 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 you know, I, I could have had a bunch of answers already thought or like topics I wanted to discuss, but I, I feel like it's best to kind of develop these things organically. And, you know, somebody may not get a lot from, from me talking about it, but they may get one or two little bits and pieces and, you know, they'll get it the way that they, the way that they, uh, you know, the, the way that they intake information, they'll get it and they'll go from there. And, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's just how every, everybody's different. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, it's definitely a topic where it's, it's still kind of under the rug. Like there's not a whole lot of info out there and, and not too many people are sharing stuff about it. I mean, there are people that are like there are celebrities that are kind or like celebrities and people in the limelight that are opening up about that stuff but it's i think it's a it's a little more difficult to relate to that when like there's those people that are just so high up on a pedestal whereas when it's like it would be so much easier to kind of attack these or not attack these problems but like just like band a community around them if if you had that little close community yeah like close by to help you kind of navigate through those those trying times and and when that community is not there it's just like you feel so lost right well i think with them it's it's you know when you look at these celebrities and and big people with all it's they have all the resources in the world right and then ultimately you know they can you know this isn't a a shot at anybody but you look at like you said you, you mentioned these big bigger celebrities that have that are, it's great that they're coming out about it because they're looked at so highly by so many people. Um, so it's, it's, it's good to show that, you know, they go through things on their own too, but you also kind of look at it in a way and you're like, you have millions of dollars in the bank. Like you don't have to work probably ever again, you know, so you can spend your time to really dedicate to your recovery, to your treatment or whatever the case may be. And it's like, well, most of us still have to go to work the next day or we still have like, you know, a lot of same, like, you know, everyday problems that people have. And then we also have to tack this on with it too. So I think it makes it really relatable. And that's kind of the plan for the future for me is to, to really bring it down to, you know, I'll use the term like working man, you know, like the everyday person, uh, you know, the everyday story. That's kind of interesting to me how you brought up there. Um, those people on the pedestal will say, can dedicate time to getting better when we break a bone or or something you mentioned it we dedicate the time six to eight weeks to getting better in a cast and then a few weeks of rehab if you decide to nobody really (laughs) dedicates the time to that concussion or mental health recovery like you said you just go back to work the next day because you can when you have a cast on people say oh it's okay you don't need to go to work we can see something's wrong that's a tough one with mental health right like if you could take the time off work, not have to worry about bills, could you recover, you know, faster, easier, better, or find your coping mechanisms to yeah to not struggle so hard day to day? 
Yeah, well, and it's tough too because, like, when you, I guess, when you compare it to a, like breaking a bone, like, let's say you're in a cast and, or like, you got your wrist in a cast or something and you go to pick something up. Well, it's compromising the healing of that bone, or you whack it on the fridge. Like, yeah. it's, it's compromising that healing of the bone. Well, if you look at your mind, like, I guess your mind in that same sense, like, there's so many things out there that can compromise the stability of your mind and very easily too. Like it doesn't take much to, to upset somebody's attitude. Right. And it's, it's, yeah, it's so fragile and it's, it's, it's a challenging thing to navigate for sure. Mm. It's yeah. It's not easily identifiable. I think that's the difference, right? Mm. Yeah. It's like, and we, it's not, go ahead. Sorry, no, go, go ahead. I was going to say it's, it's something like, you know, we, we just touched on that a second ago was that, it's you know a broken bone is a, is a physical we can see it you know other people can see it you can see it on an x-ray whatever the case may be and with any sort of mental health concussions or just mental health issues it's it oh. it's up to you know that person that you're talking to about it, like your boss or whoever or um, you know, up to your own way of, of, you know, say you're not, you're new to the idea of what's going on, or you're not really well versed in the idea of mental health and you're going through it, but you don't really know how to, um, you know, get, get it across or like talk about what you're dealing with. So it makes it even more like, I don't want to say less believable, but it makes it harder to connect with people or to, to get them to see what you might be going through because you're not able to really convey it to, you know, to, to someone that doesn't know it all. Yeah. Like so, you know, I go ahead, especially to someone who's never had like never dealt with it before. Like, say you're talking I, to your boss that's never had a concussion or never dealt with depression or bipolar or anything like that. It's it's uh, yeah, it's it's hard. You can't really even really explain it to someone without them having experienced it themselves. Yeah, I found that for me, especially it's one of the biggest takeaways from this whole thing and, and uh, has been relationships for me. So like uh you know like meeting a girl for example or you know you're seeing a girl and and uh um you know i i feel like sometimes it's a, a, almost like a responsibility that i have to tell them pretty soon in that in that in the stages of say a relationship that i deal with this but i really don't have to but i feel like because it has affected me so negatively and yes i'm on a, a pretty good um period of time where i'm in a good spot but I still feel like I have to sometimes tell them that and it can change how they look at you. Like, you know, like that it's, it's sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad, but like, it's, you know, I think revival for me and, and doing that movie is, is uh, like I said, I think we got like 2000 plus hits on, on, uh, on the direct page. And I think I got like just under a thousand uh, views, but I've had people reach out to me that were like, this is, this is really big. And I, I didn't really know what it's like to, um, you know, this is really cool that you're doing this. So, you know, like I said, it's 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 a, almost a way I think of, of getting it more into. I use the term average, but the average person's um, mindset, maybe changing it or or looking at it a certain way. Because, like I said, it's it's something I that's that's probably the biggest thing I struggle with actually is that letting someone new into to my circle or like into my my space that, um, you know, you they they might look at you differently. It's that's pretty tough. That's like by far the toughest thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Heavy. Heavy stuff. I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want to end that on uh, a heavy note, but it's something. That's good. <laughs> it's, it's something to talk about, right? It's like that's that's something that, and and you know, maybe you can edit this how you want it, but um, to maybe make it sound a little bit better, but um. Like that's what kind of brought me back to, to moto is being like i have some of my best friends in the world that i still talk to every day from this sport like guys like you know uh kale foster for example i'll, I'll give him a shout out and and you know kale uh, marco's mechanic i've known kale since we were like 12 years old you know and he's we've been through a lot together and, and you know lots of funny stories and stuff and and uh you know like these like a lot of my best friends that i've had my entire life have come from moto so if anything i felt like it was it was a place that I could present this information, you know, with revival and whatnot and be seen um, or like be received 
in the best possible way. That's kind of what really brought me back was I was like, you know what, like the, maybe like the general public, I, it's hard to deal with right now, but it's like, I've known these guys, like I said, like T-Dags or Kale or Jay Moore or, you know, like a lot of these guys, JSR, like I've known these guys my whole life and uh or more vast majority of it and they know me for who i am the good the bad and the ugly and and you know they're not gonna you know we may all look super tough but i think everybody's pretty understanding for the most part it's it's crazy how that you know if you're not on the inside maybe we don't look like that as as moto guys but um you know once you get to know the majority of us are pretty pretty open about things and pretty receptive so yeah, uh, yeah, especially over the years too. Uh, like that's something I've learned over the years. Getting to know everybody in the moto industry is is just how down to earth everyone is. You know, like it's it's the longer you spend racing, at least in the Canadian scene, and the more you get to know those people, it's it's just it's yeah, you're all a bunch of peas in one pod. You know, like we're all kind of <laughs> we're all. We're all just moto people. We're our own breed, and and we all, yeah, I think we all truly relate to each other on on one level or another. Yeah, it's a, it's that saying like what's is it what's like I don't know what they call it, but it's like same same but different. You know, we're all the same, but we're all a little different too <laughs> yeah. in our own way. But it's you know we all come back to it, so we're all the same guys. And like you say, with Canadian moto especially, it's you know, I mean if if you need something and somebody's got it, they'll let you borrow it. You know, it's, it's cool like that. And that's a really, I was really, um, that's why I didn't really push it too hard on in the U S like with this, this movie, I know race Rex shared it, but you know, I don't know what kind of, uh, how it was received, but, um, you know, with Canada, it's been, it's been, it's been great. It's felt, it's been really, really good. So, um, I don't, like I said, at first I was pretty nervous, but it's like, you know, you guys have me on here and you know, I, I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm not nearly like, I'm nervous cause I've never seen it. You know, I haven't seen the <laughs> end of it. I know it's going to be good, but, um, you know, I don't feel nervous about how it's going to be taken by my, my friends, you know, and, and then one way I call them family too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like we said, we're all, we're pretty stoked to see it. I'm actually, yeah, I'm just stoked to see something different. You know, I, like I said before, I'm sick of seeing or hearing about what, pistons jeremy martin's gotten his freaking bike and and how long christian craig's gonna ride for star yamaha i really don't <laughs> care it's they're all gonna switch brands one day anyways so yeah. it's, it's uh it's yeah, nice it's, to see something different well and that's the plan like i said for next year is like that's you know we'll all get down on a little group ride we'll get mic'd up and we'll just have some cool conversations and and i think it's gonna be um i really like i said i always like to do things really well i don't like to to put out anything that's that's kind of bull, you know, bullshit. And, and, uh, you know, we can have like the three of us, four of us, like whoever we get, you know, we get out on a ride and have it filmed. And, and that can just be a conversation. We go on for an hour and, you know, edit it down a little bit or whatever. And it's, that's a, that's something new. We can talk about, we can talk about, you know, mental health. We can talk about Christian Craig, we can do whatever, let's make it <laughs> just a lot more, you know, just something different. And I'm really like, I'm super stoked about that. So, I was actually talking to the the Cannondale uh, sales manager the other day, getting on the Cannondale. So <laughs> you, you might see me on one of those puppies. As long <laughs> as the segment's not sponsored by some piston company, we'll be good. Caleb <laughs> <laughs> will not come on if there's a it's sponsored by Vertex. No <laughs> dice. I will. I refuse to do it if it's sponsored by a piston company. You knew that. I told you. Yeah. Maybe Carillo though. There. Uh, there you go. They're the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well we'll see maybe husky will get on board and do something we'll uh you know yeah they've been uh they've been pretty cool too so i, I grew up a honda guy but you know it's uh, i went from red to white and then apparently i rode a blue bike the other, this, this year too but just don't tell anyone about that too yeah. much <laughs> allison will have your head she saw it she, she definitely saw it they, they, she follows me on instagram so she saw it but it was all media related it wasn't yeah. i like to call it, it was a tryout but it wasn't a trial. It's just a joke. Did she give you a little jab? Oh yeah. She yeah. Sure. She's good. She's good with and, the jabs. Uh, oh yeah. No, she's uh, she's she's been great. She's been keeping me on track too, and and uh, you know keeps me uh, keeps me going forward. So I send me an email and say like like hey I need this or I need that, and 
and I'm like, oh man, like she's she's keep me on keep me honest, you know, and yeah. I really appreciate that about her. And I've I sent her a nice long email saying, you know, it wouldn't be possible without none of this would have been possible without her and you know, guys like Brent, uh Brent mm-hmm. Carlson, you know, Brent's one of the most generous guys I've ever met, just a super cool dude. And, you know, we were sitting in the trailer at uh at Chilliwack and I hadn't met him up until that point, just talked over the phone and whatnot. And mm-hmm. um, you know, cause he didn't come out east at all, right? So um, you know, like I just I was like, it's, he's just one of the nicest guys I've ever met. So yeah, yeah, it's really awesome. kind of, it's yeah, they're awesome people. So it's, uh, there's been a big supportive, supportive group. Like I said, like JC Fox and, and shift and Jake at Oakley and Allison at Husky and Billy, you know, without Billy, I, I honestly, none of this would have happened because I could have, I'm sure I could have sent a few emails out and asked for, for free stuff or asked for this or that. And if we didn't have Billy to back me up. Well, they'd probably just tell me to, you know, kick rocks so <laughs> Bill, billy was uh, a big supporter of that and even down to guys like uh you know like steve Beatty at uh, 26 suspension did put the put a new spring in in the the 350 because i'm you know probably maxing that sucker out so <laughs> <laughs> awesome. but uh no it's it's been awesome man and it's uh you know i appreciate you guys for having me on and oh shit and then uh you know just making the it's just another way to get it out there and like i said when it comes out it'll be it won't be such a surprise people will be expecting it yeah can't wait it should be good i think we're rolling up on what two and a half hours here yeah oh <laughs> geez guys that was, sorry that was yeah. my fault oh no, 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 no. We, this is yeah. how everyone goes we always time just flies by when yeah. we're doing this i think we just kind of let it let it roll until it's like we'll wait till we find, <laughs> figure out something else to talk about next time <laughs> we're going on to the same topics again so yeah like we've, we've covered a lot but yeah you guys do a really good job with this too like I, i've listened to pretty much everything so far and and uh the jc one was pretty cool i thought because that was the one i listened to uh i think i was on the way to the airport or i forget it was like just right around that that chill act time so yeah i think we did it um, right before then yeah yeah so that was pretty cool to hear about him and you know he's he's uh not just the guy at fox he's got a pretty cool story so you guys do a really good job with this, and I think it's it's good to have some consistent uh, content to to take in and go from there. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks. Yeah, it's a work in progress. It's coming along. Getting it's better. Good. I think the cool thing about it is just like finding out that just everyone has a story. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. who they are. Everyone's yeah. got something to say. It. Uh, honestly, we could probably go find the next person we see on the street and have them in here yeah and everyone everyone we've had on has exceeded our expectations really like everyone's been awesome every guest yeah. we've had yeah it's been mint well should we yeah wrap her up all right yeah thanks yeah. for coming on yeah. thanks greg love what you're doing stay in that green zone stay safe yeah. out there <laughs> <laughs> i think if we keep back in this way though we won't be green for too much longer yeah. <laughs> you might Just have to premiere the movie sooner than later <laughs> <laughs> i know man I, I don't know what we're gonna do like i don't you know i know everyone's like how are you gonna do it i'm like i don't know i want to do something cool like i said this whole thing has been about doing cool stuff but i don't know we'll have to figure it out but it sucks because everyone's you know you guys are out there and you know allison like for example is in quebec and in montreal so um you know trying to get everybody around here so we'll figure it out but it'll, it'll be broadcast or something yeah. sweet we'll share the link and share the video when it comes out Yep. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no problem at all. all right. This episode's been brought to you by Poison Coffee. <laughs> <laughs>